about to enjoy this World Series run. You know. Has it been good playoffs at New Yankee Stadium ever? 2009. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sure most people remember that. That was this century at least, so that's big. <laughs> We're going to make new memories this year. I mean, they are going to make new so, memories. I'm, I mean, I've got plenty of great memories at New Yankee Stadium uh, in the playoffs. Tons. We're not uh, talking about y'all. Like y'all, we're not saying. talking about the Red Sox. We're not talking about y'all, man. Y'all, y'all missed the playoffs five of the last six seasons. We ain't talking about y'all. We talking about teams in the playoffs. Listen, I mean that's that's technically not true, given the nature of the show. But that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's neither here nor there. Here nor there. Um, we talk about the Yankees. We, we, the Yankees are going to create good new good memories for Yankee fans this playoffs. Uh, I mean, I'm glad you're hopeful. That's oh, yeah, really what matters. Of course, eternal eternal optimism. You know what it is. Are you, you know hopeful? Me, yeah. Are you hopeful because you think the team can actually win under its own volition, or because there is no clear cut favorite, and it's arguably the most open, even by baseball standards, that it's ever been? Can I say yes? Because <laughs> yeah, and I legitimately think it's both, and I think it's kind of a because of partially because of B. Like, I think the Yankees are good enough to do it partially because, well, the league is what it is this year. So, sure. So, B, so like, I think B would be the answer. No, it's both. <laughs> Fuck you. It's both. It's you both. got into the playoffs. That's all that matters. If you're one of the teams in the playoffs, I think you've got a, a shot. Yeah, uh, for sure. I'm trying to think. None of these guys, like Houston, Houston's the only one who's done it, unless I'm forgetting someone, but I don't think you're that talking I about am. Uh, winning the AL? No, d- doing anything of note in the playoffs. Oh. Uh, not, um, like, the Braves fucking yeah, no. You're right. Uh, the Dodgers, no. The Royals, <laughs> obviously not. The Padres, of course not. We, we, we just uh, going ignore, to ignore 2020, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Tigers. I mean, that they have. That's crazy. What are we uh, talking about? I mean, even if we were to include that, no, it's still. I mean, the, the how much of that team's there? That's all. A lot of the same guys. Fair point. Fair point. Uh, oh, they've got Mookie Betts. He's got one more career hit than Aaron Judge in the playoffs. Congrats! Like, well, I don't. Oh, now we're not, down talking Mookie Betts. I'm not down talking. I'm stating the facts. That's what, like you go every time I do it. Baltimore hasn't won a playoff game yet. Uh, who else? The Mets. The Mets are. Wild, we'll get to those games that happened today. <laughs> yeah, Cleveland. Yeah. I mean, this is this is when they lose. You know what I mean? Like this is what they do. If not this year for Cleveland, and I know they didn't come in with these great expectations. If not this year for Cleveland, like truly never. Um, <laughs> who else is in these fucking playoffs? Houston. Houston. I uh, hard not to respect. And yeah. then, do we mention that, Casey? Milwaukee. No, Milwaukee's the only team I haven't mentioned okay. yet. Yeah, Milwaukee. And I didn't need to. Uh, <laughs> oh, Philadelphia. I forget, I forget the Phillies are in. Uh, it feels like they haven't played good baseball in a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Yeah, it's been it's been a minute. Yes. Like they won the NL. They've made the World Series. Obviously, again, the Braves won. Is that 19? No, it was 21. They win in 21. I don't say they uh, they did it if they – it's weird. Like, it's not the same team by any stretch, but it's the same formula. You know what I mean? Like, they got Gio Urshela. They got Jorge Soler. Like, they did – Ronald Cunha is not playing. Like, there, it is their, <laughs> their formula. Chris Sale might never walk again. Like, it's this is their formula. When they win uh, the NL East by 100 games, they're done. Uh, so last year they, they spent all of October crying like, oh, we had this huge break this year. They played a double header. They lost their ACE and now they have to play tomorrow. Can't wait to see what their excuse is Cause this couldn't be more the opposite of what, <laughs> what last year was. Hey man, I've seen as, as, um, I've seen people spend a lot of time crying about, but well, not, not, not anywhere near as much time as Braves fans spent crying about the one seed. Like that was absurd, right. but I've seen a lot of Yankee fans mention it. And I'm just like, okay, yes, I understand. The whatever team comes in, 
you're still going to be able to pitch your best pitcher twice in a five game series. Like you don't really lose a shit ton. And then the other team, your team gets a week. Off. I don't really care about that, whatever, but I understand it's rust da, 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 or whatever. We've spent a lot of, we've spent a lot of time talking about it. It's like, Hey, uh, would you rather play in the wild card or get a like, bro? I would rather have one last chance, le- one less chance of getting eliminated. That's what I would. Sure. Prefer. I do not That's- really care about them getting a week off. If a week off fucks you up that much, you were never gonna fucking win anyway. Simple, and right? Just Especially worry. in a best of three. Like if you lose one game on some nonsense, now you gotta <laughs> you can't split. You bro, know, you a, a, a the other two. And a bad game could send you home. Not I'm going to yeah. send you home generally, but especially in a fucking three game sample. Like a blue. That's what I mean. A blue like, loses I, you a game, and then the next game, your starting pitcher gets hurt in the second inning or some shit. And then you, you're looking at going home. Like, I'm yeah. Really like, that. I'm good. If that game won, like I'm thinking of uh, the Severino game. Who is that against? The one game versus the Twins. Who pitched for the Twins that day? Urban Santana. Oh, right. shocking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Severino goes out there. Officially, it was one-third of an inning, right? Like he, uh, one-third of an inning. Did he get the body out? I thought he did. I, I don't I think remember. He, I don't remember. It was either he, zero or one out. But, but I sure, know he didn't I, get more than one. That, that no, I no. Yes. <laughs> I know he didn't get more than one out. That I could tell you were confident, yes. The Twins put up like three or four runs, whatever it was, and it was just like, yes. holy shit, are, are the Twins going to actually win a playoff game? And then by the bottom of the first, it was a tie ball game, and Urban Santana was on. <laughs> the bottom of the first, that. the Yankees were like, no. Yeah, not. we're not too concerned about any of no. this. Uh, we're either. upset with Severino. Like, I was saying, like, listen, man, this, this score is going to have to get to like 7 nothing for me to care. Like sure. once it gets to seven nothing, like okay, then I'll start. Like, oh, wow, they might go home today. Three nothing. Like Which that. against the twins, super reasonable. Uh, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and Urban but Santana now, pitching. I'm not exactly scared of that dude. But even in a one game, losing your starter almost matters less than in a three game because you're going all out with your bullpen regardless. In a three mm-hmm. game, you do that in game one. Well, now you're fucked for game two. Like I'm very interested to see how the Mets. And Braves fair. After Boy, they both got they both they both got fucked. <laughs> well, really. both they they, got they, fucked. they both went all out for game one, which I kind of like the Mets. Obviously, you can't just roll over there. Your season's on the line. Game two, you're not just going to assume, especially with forty fucking minutes between games, that oh the Braves will just groove us a win. Like you can't assume that. You guys, it's the your, your division rival. There's no reason to assume. They want you in the playoffs over the Diamondbacks. Um, But they both go all out. What's his name? Uh, uh, The club. I'm blanking on the Edwin Diaz threw 41 (laughs) pitches today, 42 (laughs) pitches today. And he threw 26 yesterday. Like he's he's going to be. I can't imagine he's ready to pitch game one, maybe not game two. They claim he's going to be available. Do with that information whatever you will. People say people lie all the time. I can't imagine sure. he's he threw sixty seven pitches in two fucking days. He's going to be available tomorrow. That sounds I mean, o- like pie in the sky to me. It's October and he was throwing a lot of sliders, at least in the eighth and ninth tonight. So maybe that's their strategy. Like, hey, no hard stuff. It's not really working well, anyways. So let's let's stay with slider. That's going to be less wear and tear on your arm. You'll be able to do that more frequently. But he's going to have to sit eventually. Um, I feel like no- play- I feel like the players just he can rest when the season's done, or you can figure that out down the road. But I, sure. I I'd be surprised if he if he pitches tomorrow. I'd be surprised if he's effective. Let's put it that way. That'd be really sure. Surprised. Sure. Uh, the Braves. I don't know. I think their plan genuinely was we're going to win game one, which was a fine plan. So far, I'm with them. <laughs> and then we don't have to even acknowledge that Chris Sales hurt because no one expects us to pitch him game two if we win either way. And then we can deal with why isn't he pitching game one of the wild card round. That's tomorrow's problem. That's not today's <laughs> problem. Maybe he's magically better tomorrow. Because then Snicker comes out after the game, and he's just like, he's probably not pitching in the wild card round. I was like, what? So he's hasn't pitched in nine days. His last outing, I think he got pulled in the second, something like that. And I guess his back's just been 
fucked up for a while. I saw people saying his velocity was the lowest it was yep. all season. That last, last start, start. It, was, it was down like three miles an hour. Yep. And it sucks. Like I was locked in on game two being like, I don't think the Mets are just going to let the Braves win. I want to see Chris Sale pitch his team to the playoffs. And then he gets pulled and it's like Nightingale reporting it. It's like, ah, he might pitch a perfect game if Nightingale is reporting it. Um, but yeah, he, he's just out and it sucks. Like he won the triple crown as did Scooble. Uh, like we're going to talk awards. Maybe the most boring, straightforward. Oh, it's so straightforward. Oh my God. It's so straightforward. Across yeah. the board. Like I have, NL Cy Young is the only one that has even a hint of debate. And even that, if it feels like Sale's going to win that, but I, you could make a legitimate argument for two people. Let's put it that way. The other ones is like, yeah, no, nah, this is pretty straightforward. Like even Lindor hits that home run in the ninth, and and the announcers immediately go into this is why he's an MVP candidate. I almost wish, like they're they're not wrong. He's definitely a candidate in the same sense that like. Shay Langelier is a candidate for the AL. Yeah, I hate, I, I hate uh, that too. I hate he's that not going to win it. You know what I mean? Like, he's a clear second play. We really don't have to. We, yeah, like, just just say he's had MVP deal. caliber season. I feel like that's yeah. so much better because he has. It's just he's in the same league as an alien. So he's not going to win. He's not a legitimate candidate. We all know who's going to win the award. All I, I just wish he there was another award. You know what I mean? Like it. They don't do split. What was the last split MVP in any sport? Was it the NFL? Um, the last one McNair I remember was Manning and McNair. That was the last one I remember. Manning and McNair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the last yeah. one I remember. I don't, I don't, I don't think there's been one since, man. No, they don't do it in any sport. Uh, and I respect that. I, 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 I don't, I don't feel like it's, it's most valuable player, not players. Like I respect that. It should not be fucking split. Fuck that. Then they should. Split. The MLB should get rid of. They do too. Oh, we're talking about the Hanger on Award? No, I'm saying they do two MVPs. They do an AL and an NL, well, despite I mean, the fact that it's fuck all different. Honestly, honestly, quite fr- I've I've never really cared, but like now that you say that out loud, like yeah, they really should they really should just have one MVP. Like, what are you really? Or doing every other league should have two. Like yeah, every other league yeah, has because it's essentially the same thing. an American and National League. Yeah, right. <laughs> just, yeah. Ever. I mean, that's. That's very fucking fair. I can't, I've never really thought about it, <laughs> but that's very fair. Like, why do we have two MVPs, really? The, the leagues, I get why it started that way. The leagues were super different uh, for a oh, hundred yeah, years. Right, right, but, like, we, we, we they're not for change. <laughs> like, they're not different anymore. Like, we're, we're the 2024. Exact it's the exact same them? thing. Everybody plays each other on top of it. So, now everybody right. can say, oh, well, if it's exclusive, NL versus NL. No, nah, everybody plays each other every year now. We really don't right. need to it Throughout the year. Either. Throughout right. the year, like the Royals or somebody, when we were still in it, I, I cared more. Uh, and in it, in big quotes. Uh, <laughs> but like the Nationals were playing, like the Twins, maybe one of those fucking teams. And it was just like, why is this the end of the seat? Like, I do think NFL, while it rarely works out, has the end of the season figured out correctly. And MLB got lucky and it today. Be that hard. No, it's it the easiest. Be that hard. Thing to do. It's really MLB, easy. Like, because. MLB actually didn't get this right. They were lucky a catastrophic hurricane swept through the Southeast and pushed Braves Mets to today because Braves Mets weren't playing each other this weekend. That wasn't (laughs) right. Right. So that's where it's just like, how difficult could this be? Like, how many? I understand you don't want to schedule Red Sox Yankees for the last series of the season because you want to at least have the guys of those games mattering in July, August, even early September. And at 21, they definitely matter when Stanton hit a home run every time a ball was thrown near him. <laughs> sure did. You but, sure like, did. It, last last weekend, imagine if that season, because we, we had to play the fucking Nationals that last season, <laughs> that last series of the 21 season before we played you guys in the wild card game. But imagine if that was just four straight games, if we had a three-game series to the side home field and then the one-game playoff. That would have been outrageous. Now, that... I think that's the only year that ever would have mattered in like my lifetime where Red Sox Yankees were that close the last week into the season. Right. Right. I mean, I I just think if you're going to schedule, if you're going to schedule the way MLB does and you're going to play whatever, 12, 13, I don't, I don't know what the, what the, the schedule, how many times they face each other nowadays, yeah, whatever, 12, 13, 10, whatever it is, scheduling three for the last week of the year, the last weekend of the year, 
like the the reward is so much greater than the risk. Because guess what? If you schedule Red Sox and Yankees for the for the end of the year and it's a wash, I'm sure you could find a Yankees Red Sox series this year that was a wash. Several oh, of them, in question. fact. Several of them. So our whole season was a wash. So I legit <laughs> several of them were washes. So it's like you don't really lose much. No. Then series in July, like like the only only the only thing the, the Red Sox were in it for the last series the Yankees the Red Sox played was making Garrett Cole uh you know look how he looked on the mound. Yeah. That was about it. And outside of that, it was like there wasn't a whole lot memorable uh Yankees Red Sox wise. You could just schedule it for the last weekend of the no. year. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And like June or July, whenever Yoshida and Rafaela and, and Judge at that 700 foot arm run, when that stuff was happening, it was great. Uh, and that's why you like don't schedule the whole month of September to be Red Sox Yankees, obviously. Like we did play Tampa, so there is a world where that could have mattered. Um, yeah. big battle for third place, but I don't know, it just doesn't seem that hard. I don't understand and it, like I miss interleague play being one month a year. Just one month, you get it all out of your system. The rest of the year, focus on everything else. I, I yeah, I'm I'm kind of boomerish about interleague play. Like I'm cool with it being a thing. I feel like it should not be at the beginning of the season and it should not be at the end. Like to me, just just put it in fucking July, in June, concentrate on those months. There's no reason the Yankees should be playing the fucking Pirates in September. Like I, I just there's no reason for it. Like you you're not gonna have any kind of uh, well. You will you will have standing implications. It just won't have to do with the directly with the two teams. It's just right. I, just just don't. We don't have you have do more that. likely playoff implications. I actually don't hate it at the beginning of the season because at least in my mind, and I mean like the very first like two weeks, at least in my mind there are more warm weather NL teams, and they should like the first month all of like the Red Sox shouldn't play a home game until May. Like I. No, 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 joke. no joke. No joke. Uh, Fenway in April is no joke. No joke. No. So, like, I don't want to do the whole 15 game West Coast trip to start every season, but like a Padres, Dodgers, Arizona, come back to Miami, you know, hit Atlanta. Let's see. Any of these AL teams at Tampa, hit Tampa, Houston, Texas. And then come back home because I'll get bring you to a fucking you know eight the twentieth of April most likely if not later. Cool, great. Every Love time it. I see the Yankees start off the season with a, with a ten game home sound, I'm like oh fuck, here we go again. <laughs> every year, right? every time I see it, it's like I don't want this, bro. Because you're gonna be talking about forty five degree weather and all kind of bullshit. Nobody it's wants terrible. that. Nobody no. wants that. It's I've seen more opening days rained out <laughs> in Boston because yeah, it's early April in Boston. It's insane. I get Marathon Monday. They should be there Marathon Monday. And like it's early, start- sometimes fucking late March on top of that. Like, right. Because the season starts earlier than it did 15 years ago, whatever it was. And then it's like, oh, great. Your home opener. Okay, it's 43 and raining. Like, what, was the, what was the point of this? This could have been prevented. Yeah. Just send them to Anaheim or whatever other hot weather place. Keep the games out of New York, man. We, we don't need them here. In April. Doms. Does MLB have a dome problem? So I'm thinking about it. It's like Texas, Houston are domes which they need to be, like, legally need to be. Uh, Kansas City is, and Kansas City is hot as fuck. Uh, sure I was just there two weeks ago. Hot as fuck. Uh, <laughs> sure is. Toronto's a dome. Is that it? Am I missing a dome? Tampa. I, yeah, Tampa's. <laughs> yeah, don't get, don't get me wrong. I understand why. But, I mean, they're a piece of shit. Like, but... It's a piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> it's a dome all the same. No, it is. Uh, no doubt. Uh, uh, but that's it, that right? It, Milwaukee? Milwaukee's no, a dome. Yeah, Milwaukee's a dome. I think that the, you said the Diamondbacks, right? Are they? They have a retractable roof. Interesting. I know they have like the humidor they talk about. I know they like bring their fields. They can move their field and shit. I didn't realize. Yeah, they have I don't a think roof. that was a dome. Yeah, okay, yeah. so then that's it. So it's like five, six, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's a summer sport, so I understand, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, a sport that has what three teams in Florida? Two? It's two, right? Two teams in Florida, and two teams in New York. And then you got Chicago. Then you got Cincinnati. You got Pittsburgh. I, I don't know, man. You probably should have more domes. Uh, probably I should. Three. Philadelphia. Like, there's a lot of cold. Like, what? 
what was that snow game? Was that you guys and in, in the yes. Phillies? Was that so? Yeah, and yeah. they were like, like "We're just going to rules of baseball." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, what? what are you talking about? Uh, but yeah, it, it, who's your? I, I'm just trying to run through awards that are even maybe debatable. Like it does suck, like because I've seen people make the argument for Class A as the most dominant pitcher in baseball this year. I think that's true. Is he the Cy Young? I can't imagine the argument there. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do the rare thing that I do, and I'm gonna I'm gonna center the Yankees here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make us the main character. If Mariano ain't win no fucking Cy Young, I ain't trying to hear about Emmanuel Class A. Respectfully, I'm I'm just I'm not trying to hear it. Uh, No. And, and you have a clear – in like a down year, okay, sure, give it to him. Scooble's right there. It's easy, just give him the award. It's very easy. We don't have to debate this. We don't have to go back and forth. Scooble was the – Scooble pitched like what, a solid like 100 more innings, if not more than that? Ben Class A? Uh, probably. I've, I've seen – what I've loved is Guardians fans tweeting out – uh Stats that only favor like the 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 stat head graphic, but it only. Oh, but I hate Klasse. those tweets so much. By the way, no, it's <laughs> very funny because they're like games played and Class A's like tripled up in school. Because <laughs> <laughs> <Closer>. <laughs> like I can appreciate that. Like, hey, he has played more games. There's no arguing that. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's he, he's entered the game more. Yes, correct. Has so. Rivera led the league in saves three times. I don't like he what's the highest he came Cy Young he came in third third yeah, third second oh you came second what year was that second and 05 okay uh top 10 and MVP never once twice back-to-back years 0405 who was a Cy Young in 05 Bartolo Colon so you know, <laughs> <laughs> Bartolo had a cr- crisp four war to Johan Santana. And this is baseball reference. Four B war to Johan Santana. Seven two. Uh, <laughs> hey man, so, listen, we 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 could do an entire we could do a fucking series on bad MLB votes. Uh, bad oh, MLB they get wrong. Votes. Pretty mm-hmm. exclusively, like even the NL so MVP, or oh NL God, so yeah. in 05, they gave it to Cologne and Chris Carpenter. Both of those guys won 21 games. Dontrell Willis won 22 games, uh, <laughs> and did not win the Cy Young. Now, it came in second by it was 132 to 112, the final. Roger Clemens had the highest war for the NL, was 7 8. Now, I don't love giving away awards that way, but he also pitched 32 games and had a 187 ERA. Was he used to the gills? Probably. Uh, so I'm not <laughs> too upset he didn't get it, but Dontrell had a 152 ERA plus to Chris Carpenter's 150. It was close. They both had seven complete games. Dontrell Willis had five shutouts to Carpenter's four. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Dontrell Willis had a lower ERA. I'm chalking this one up to good old fashioned racism because he didn't. <laughs> he didn't clear him in a single category. <laughs> <I'm looking> at... <laughs> I mean, I, who am I to argue? Who am I to argue? Strike- Chris really? Carpenter had more strikeouts, so there you go. Oh, great! How many more innings did he pitch? Uh, five. Okay, well, that was it. Okay. Yeah, you had 40 more strikeouts. Yeah, 40 five. more strikeouts. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't like he had two more strikeouts. Like, it was a size. Damn, they, they pitched 240 and 236 innings. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that, 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 ain't never coming, that ain't never coming back. No, I mean, Oswald pitched 241. Clemens, old-ass Clemens, pitched 211. Clemens was like 58 at that point, pitching 200 innings in a season. So Chad Cordero also got Cy Young votes that year. Uh, Chad Cordero, the closer for, I believe that was the second year of the Nationals, maybe the first. He got Cy Young votes? I led the league in saves. He had 47 saves. Was I? 182 ERA. Oh, I had Chad Cordero on every team I had that year. Um, (laughs) Where was I? 
so yeah, they they will they do get it wrong. I don't know that they're going to get anything wrong this year. Um, like NL, even NL Rookie of the Year, which I do find to be like the most intriguing debate because all the rest are again very straightforward. Oh, yeah. Um, I, like I don't know if there's a wrong a choice where I'm going to be like, man, that was dumb. You know what I mean? Like either of the Jacksons. I think have a great case. Skeens obviously has a case. If, he, if I know one of those three are going to win it, so that's where it's just like, yeah, that I'm pretty okay with any of them winning it. I know the numbers say what they say, and I am a, a very firm believer in just looking at the numbers, right? With that said, there's only one of those people you can make the argument for being the best at their position in the entire sport. But that's Paul Skeens. So I think this is relatively straightforward. Like, Merrill's been great. If if they give Merrill the rookie of the year, you're not going to see me complain or bring this up 10 years from now. Like, oh, that's bullshit. Like, you, you, you won't see it because he's been fucking fantastic. But, like, Paul Skeens, the only thing that's stopping Paul Skeens from being in the Cy Young fucking contention is the fact that he got brought up in what, like, May? End of May? Like I don't even think it should disqualify him, honestly. Like, if they gave him that, I wouldn't be too upset about it. I mean, the thing is, like, it, it's tough when you have other dudes who have been as dominant as Wheeler and Sale were, and they pitched, like, 60 more innings. It's it's a tough sell at that point. So, like, I get it from that perspective. But if they if they turn around and they gave Paul Skeen the, 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 the Cy Young, who am I to argue? You gave Blake Snell, what, two, three? How, two. Two. Him too. And, and and it wasn't like he was throwing a ton of innings either. Like, and I'm, I'm not no. saying that to shit on Blake Snow, but he wasn't with that. It, it, it's similar. Like, he made he got like 140. He made 23 starts. Like, I don't know that that's not enough. What he just did to Judge and Soto, and I use them uh, because they're really good, not to shit on them. But what he did to them in back to back at bats. Huh? No, I just I was there. I was, I was, I was, right. I was, like, was terrifying. I was there. I was, I was like, this is terrifying. He, that pitch to Soto was like, boy. it was crazy. Woo, woo. It was like, I don't even know how you called. Like, if the ump called that a ball, I wouldn't have even blamed him because it would have been like, right. okay, like, I right. get that's it. How good the, that's how that's how fire the pitch was because it was like, oh, if you didn't see that, I can't even fault you. If you didn't call that strike, I feel like he just called that strike three because it was like. Damn, that looked like a great pitch. Fuck it, I'm gonna ring him up. Cause I ain't no way he saw that go into the into the mitt no. to the point where it's like, yeah, that's a fucking strike. Ain't no way. Uh, yeah, Skeen's amazing. Skeen's had a six WAR. That's all baseball reference. I understand. Fangrass is gonna have a different. Skeen's had a six WAR. Chris Sale had a six two, in six more starts. He had point two more WAR. Uh, Chris Sale pitched 177 innings to Skeen's 133. Uh, record doesn't matter, but it's 11 and three to 18 and three. 196 ERA for Skeen's, 238 for Sales, 214 ERA plus for Skeen's to Sales 174. Like the strikeouts are 225 to 170. That's if you pro right out. If you give Paul Skeen six more starts, I feel like he. Gets yeah, he's, 50 smoking, he's, smoking more that. Yeah, he's smoking. Yeah, he's getting fifty more Ks. K percentage, uh, Skeen's thirty three point one to sales thirty two point one. Walks obviously Skeen has less walks, so I don't like that doesn't mean anything. Walk percentage is six point two for Paul Skeen's five point six for Chris Sale. Um, I don't think it's going to be a debate. Obviously, K per nine eleven point four for Sale to eleven point five for Skeen's. Uh, the whip favors Skeens. Walks are a dead, like per nine or dead even. I don't know. I don't think it's Skeens did give up one more home run than Chris Sale, which is interesting. I'm gonna look up how how many uh, how many innings Blake Snell pitched that one year. I'm curious now. Last year? No, when he the first time he won the side. Because last year, I remember it was a big conversation, and then when you compared it to the rest of the league, it wasn't crazy. It was 180 both times he won the Cy Young. Okay, well, 180 is way more than 133, so I can't make that. I can't make that point for sure. I can't, <laughs> I can't make that point. I was gonna say we could give Blake Snell the Cy. I can't make that point. Never mind. But yeah, 
yeah, I, I don't know. Chirio obviously got off to a very slow start because um, he's 14 years old. Uh, he's got I the think Chirio, the Chirio might have been the best of the rookies the last, like, three months of the year. Sure. He, was, he was amazing the last three months. I don't know. That's what I mean. Like, Merrill, like, they were in a late and close game. He was like, I got us. Like, Merrill had moments. They happened for the Padres. It was the West Coast. Most people didn't care or see it. But, like, while the Diamondbacks were getting all the smoke, like, oh, man, no one's played better than the Diamondbacks. The Padres were playing the same level of baseball. They just didn't fall off in September. That was the only difference. Like, the Padres just kept winning baseball games. Um, so, I don't – like, that's where I don't – Chorio looks like the wrong choice. Like you said, he, he was unbelievable the last couple of months. He went 2020. I believe he's the youngest guy to go 2020 in, like, the modern no, era. Uh, like 117 OPS plus, like he, they're happy they paid him. Uh, they're very yeah. happy. Yeah, they, very happy they got out for that. Yes, for sure. They're very, very happy they did that because he's unbelievable. And his brother, I know, is a top hundred prospect too in the Cleveland system. Um, as for Merrill versus Skeens. I, I just can't hate whoever they pick. Like, I, I think they're both great options. Like, I I would pick Skeens. I understand, and I mean, for reasons I mentioned earlier, and, I, like, I understand, I understand, I clearly understand the argument for both of them, and I'm not going to sit here and shit on Jackson Merrill, but it's like, man, I, I watched Paul Skeens pitch. You ain't telling me somebody better than that dude. Like, <laughs> like, you're just not like you're not telling me what Jackson Merrill's better than him at baseball I, at his job or however you want to phrase that. I'm sorry, just I, I like it's not similar at all. Like the the, the apples out, but the conclusion is it's how I felt in in fucking 2016 when Michael Former won the um the rookie of the year. It's like you're not gonna sit here and fucking tell me he was better than Gary Sanchez. Sorry, he just he wasn't better. Like you can argue numbers and this that and third, he was not better. Like Paul Skeens got on the mound and he was making grown ass baseball players look, look like fucking high schoolers every start. Th- he was the best rookie in the National League. No disrespect to Jackson Merrill, he could take his second place, second place, and go. But he should like J- uh, Skeens should definitely win to me at least. Yeah, I wanted to see how many innings Yamamoto actually threw before he got shut down. It was only ninety. Um, he was uh, like it was an uh, unbelievable year four rookies that played because even Imanaga had that crazy start. He finished with a 291 ERA over 173 innings. Like obviously it's a 30 year old rookie versus a guy who was in college last year versus a 25 year old versus a 20 year old versus how old's Merrill? 21, 21. Um Unbelievable year for rookies, and I'm sure I'm missing people on the NL side of things. Uh, and as and as far as people who debuted and contributed, um, but I don't, I don't know. That's the only like AL rookie of the year. It's good guys. Like there, there's good competition there, but. It's not quite, the, the high end of it is not quite the same. No, and it's like heels. What twenty six? He's he's, he's it's like twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah, yeah. He, but it's all, it's like his fourth year pitching in the bigs. Whether or not he was a household, <laughs> yes, yeah, not the same. Like he's done it before. Wells was really good once he's especially once uh, they stopped platooning him. Uh, Willier, it sounds like they're going to give Gold Glove to as like because no one's going to vote for him, despite the fact that he should obviously be in the conversation based on what he did on the field. And then Rafael has got the best counting stats, but when you look at anything else, you're just like, I don't know <laughs> if this is the correct choice by any stretch. Uh, and Mason Miller, too. Yeah, he almost, like, he doesn't feel like a, a rookie either. Because... Yeah, he don't, he don't. Because he came up <laughs> last year, he made some starts, and then he died. Like, right. he don't feel like right. a rookie. He don't. Right, but I listen. He had that shit. I know a lot of people definitely put tickets on him after the first two weeks of the season, and he's fin- like he's had a great year. Two four WAR, uh, two five two four nine ERA, twenty eight saves, one hundred and four strikeouts in sixty five innings. What's his K per nine? Fourteen point four. Uh, like he was, Not he was definitely 
definitely excellent, but and it doesn't help like all the Oakland shit going on too. Like uh that definitely didn't help his case. I don't think they wanna like even Lawrence is Lawrence Butler technically a rookie? I feel like he has to be. Man, he yes. played 40 games last year. So he's not a rookie? He played 42 games, 123 at bats. So if he's a rookie, it's Surprise by like the up. thinnest of margins. Yeah, uh, no, I think he probably exceeded. exhausted his eligibility. But I, yeah. man, man, who knows with eligibility? We all know how weird they, they could be about that. So I don't know that for sure. I think he probably – Baseball did. reference says exceeded rookie limits during 23 season. That's okay. shocking for the A's that they would do that. <laughs> they probably didn't expect none from him. That's why. No, they definitely didn't. But, I mean, he's only 24 now. So, like, even as a 23-year-old, you don't think, like, maybe? It's crazy. Know, man. The A's, the A's going to do what the A's do. Yeah, um, not make fucking sense. See, Lawrence Butler was about as fun of a player as I saw this year. Uh, he was so anytime, I, anytime I watch the A's, like I, I'm not trying to make this Red Sox centric, but his his rise did start during a Red Sox series this year. Maybe the series before it, and he carried it through. But I mean, he stole 18 bags. He was caught stealing zero times. Uh, he had 22 home runs, 24 doubles, two triples. 807 OPS, 131 OPS plus. Like Lawrence, but in 125 games, Lawrence Butler showed the fuck out. He was uh, him and Brent Rooker were awesome. Man, Brent Rooker, Brent Rooker went crazy, man. And, and like what I love about crazy. that one was th- there was that random tweet where they were yeah. showing like the scoreboard, and it was like where Brent Brent Rooker was hitting like 314 on the scoreboard. <laughs> it, was the, it was it was the scoreboard and the artist rendition for the Vegas Stadium. Yeah, for like 2029. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Brent Rooker's on the scoreboard at 314. This was like Brent Rooker hitting 314. What the fuck is this? And then he was like, okay. And I took that personally. And then yeah, look at the season. It was great. Brett Rooker seems like a cool dude because he responded to that. But he said uh, to that tweet, he said something like, the "Season hasn't even started yet, and I'm already getting chirped." Uh, <laughs> and then yeah. someone DM'd him, "You fucked up my parlay," and he mailed them a jersey that said, "Please stop wasting your money on me." Uh, autographed jersey. I didn't know that. Nice. Yeah, with like, like a smiley face. Brett Rooker is the realest. Like, I like in that. terms of. Between that, I saw Ian Happ bought all the the bleacher uh, yes, season fun, ticket holders in, in Chicago around the beers. He just taped like a couple hundred bucks to a ball and threw it to him. Um, yeah, so a couple of very cool. I'm sure there's stuff I missed that's 30 teams. Uh, <laughs> a, lot <of laughs> yeah, a, lot, a lot of things going on, yeah. Uh, but those are the things I saw that stuck out uh, last couple. And then, I mean, this, this Mets Braves – Double header today. I Man, can't remember. Nuts. Yeah, I can't remember a regular season game like that. Obviously, you, there's 162 of them. A lot of them largely inconsequential, even for good teams. Uh, they're not winning it in type scenarios for both teams. <laughs> yeah, but you never get that. And for the, that game, for the Mets to climb on top, immediately give it back, and then. I was watching it, and I said, if Lindor gets a guy on, he's just one of these players. Really, since he hit that leadoff home run, in, was it a lead? Yeah, leadoff home run in Puerto Rico. Uh, when he was still at the Guardians. Ever since that, it's just like, this guy just knows the moment. So I'm glad he's going to play postseason baseball. The Mets have this pumpkin Pete Alonso brought in. Feels like they have, they've had the vibes right, really, since Iglesias showed up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Mets have been, and somebody I have not watched a ton of Mets baseball this year, but just from the outside looking in, they've been really fun. Like, I'm happy for them, and I'm especially happy for Lindor because I feel like he's gotten a lot of undue shit since he came here for a lot of very obvious reasons. reasons. But I, I don't, I don't understand. Well, I understand why. Like, his type is kind of a middling average. You know, hot. You know, hot, great defense, good base runner, good power type. Those type of type guys tend to be undervalued by. You know, Hate that kind types. of fucking guy. <laughs> right, like, they tend to be undervalued by boomer types. So I understand why he gets the shit that he gets, and he he plays for a team that well, they haven't won a World Series since I've been on Earth. So you have a lot of impatient fans, and you add it all up, and then you get that. But I I, I love him. And I'm glad that he 
he he's getting his flowers in a way that I haven't seen since he got to New York. No, I mean his first year as a Met wasn't like the greatest year anyone's ever had. It was a hundred OPS plus. He obviously oh, he wasn't that he big. wasn't that good. He deserved some of the shit he got that year. He did. No, but it was still like crazy glove. Uh, yeah. Like he he went twenty with ten stolen bases. Like it, it's not like he did nothing. Next yeah. year he went twenty six. Uh, it was 16 steals. This is the like the weirder part. I, I understand the bags got bigger than that, but still. Uh, he had swiped 20 bags multiple times for Cleveland. It's not like he wasn't a base stealer. Because then last year he goes 31-31 with 33 doubles. And then this year he went 33-29, damn near 30-30 again with 39 doubles. Um, he's just the best. He's, he's one of the best shortstops I've ever seen. Uh Love the guy. Always looks happy as shit. Love the guy. Love fucking Francisco Lindor. Love him. Unbelievable smile on him. Top 10 in MVP the last two years with the Mets. Obviously, looks like he's going to finish second this year. That'll be his one, two, three, six top 10 finish in his career. He's got a top 15 in there as well. The man's going to make the Hall of Fame. Definitely. He's going to make the Hall of Fame. Definitely. One of the best shortstops of all time. Um, Absolute monster, and I'm I'm glad he's going to be playing postseason baseball Same. for the Metropolitans this year. Yeah. Um, Louis Arise, I know you don't give a fuck. I think it's very cool. He's led the league in batting for three different teams three straight years. Like that's that's baseball. Like that shit has existed forever, and he's the only guy to do that. I think it's cool. And I also think it's cool to dunk on people about him. So I just choose the I just choose the latter one. I think it's cool. No, I mean there are certain things that I don't care about that I could still look at and be like, that's cool. Like driving in 140 runs in a season. I don't care about RBI like that anymore because it's, it's a team stat, yada yada yada, whatever. But like, still seeing the the, the big ass 140 in the RBI Cup, that's still pretty fucking cool. Seeing a guy win three straight batting titles, it's still it's still pretty fucking cool, especially when you consider it arise. Like the thing that makes him cool. Like aside from all the nonsense that comes from people like that doing what they do, is he's a clear outlier because you're not supposed to succeed in this no. environment doing what the fuck Luis Arias does, and he does no. succeed at doing what he does. And like he he, I was looking at his baseball reference, and he walks like four percent of the time, and then he strikes out four percent of the time. It's like you never ever see that shit. So no. I can appreciate an outlier, and he is one. Yeah, he's good. That's. There are so many baseball players. There have been so many baseball players that there were going to be outliers. Like when yep. when Christian Campbell's rise started in the minors, people were like, eh, I don't know if I buy it because no one else plays like this. That's like one of the stupidest ways of thinking to me. And I understand a lot of scouts are trying to save their own ass. They want to go with the safe player. When someone's doing that. something yeah. no one else is doing and it's working tremendously, maybe stop and be like, this guy's got to figure it out. Like, don't touch him. Don't, don't fuck with him. Now the Red Sox have added lift and launch angle and power to his uh, arsenal. That's fine. And it didn't start off well. It took him a while to figure that out, but uh, melding the two is beautiful. Arise obviously has no interest in melding the two. He's like, Let me- <laughs> yeah. I, I, and I'll say this for him. He, he knows it. He knows what he's good at and he sticks with it. Like he ain't yeah. really, like they, because I'm I'm positive somebody's like, hey man, you know you you could be so much more valuable if you just hit the ball in the air a little bit more. And he's like, brother, I hit the ball line to line. That's what I do. That's what I get paid to do. And I'm just gonna keep doing it. So I respect that. He, he's staying true to himself. Scored 83 runs uh, <laughs> this year, and he played for Miami for a large portion of the year. I don't know. Like he's hitting 299 with the Marlins. He got traded to the Padres. He played 117 games with the Padres. He got traded much earlier than I remembered. Yes, uh, he sure did. The Marlins, the Marlins, we had the White Sox so early, bro. They were like, sure. hey, bro, we, we don't want this. And even this year, like, this is the lowest OPS plus he's posted since 21, yep. which was his first full season in baseball. Uh, so that's where it's like. Yeah, he ran like a 125 OPS plus for like four years. If I'm not mistaken, something like that. One for 25, somewhere in that range. Yeah, he's, he started off 124 as a 22 year old. He played 92 games, but he was a rookie. Like, I tend to throw away rookie seasons when I'm talking. Like, he had a great rookie season. I'm not trying to take it away from him. Right. But in terms of like looking at who he's become, 
uh, because then 2020 happens, obviously, that, to my knowledge, wasn't his fault. Uh, and then 21 happens, and that was his first 121-game season uh, where he had, like, arrived. And like you had said, even then, 43 walks to 48 strikeouts, uh, some outrageous because then he went 50 walks to 43 strikeouts in 22, uh, 35 walks to 34 strikeouts last year. And 24 walks to 29 strikeouts this year, uh, largely due to the Marlins being just being on the Marlins. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> like, homeboy went an entire period of like 30 games, whatever. He struck out three times. Like, yeah, you know, like, uh, yeah. I, I don't value the same shit a lot of these other boomer people do, but I, I could, I could. Cool is cool. Like, yeah, yeah. Do I care that much that he that he made uh, he made his outs on the ground instead? I, no. Is it a cool nugget? Yeah, of course it is. You strike out three yeah. times in a month? Like, yeah, that's a cool fucking nugget, yes. He has 93 doubles over the last three seasons. Like, it, I understand they're not home runs. He's good. Super like, he's good. He's legitimately ball. good. He's just not, you know, like one of the best hitters in the sport. He's really good at his job. Like, it's weird. Like, I, I get what you're saying, but I think when you have that kind of – commanding control over the strike zone as a hitter. We see how hard it is to hit at all. So when you have that kind of commanding control, I do put him as one of the best hitters in the sport. It doesn't mean he's the best. He's not the best in the fucking NL West. He's not the best on his own team. Like, I'm not arguing any of that. <laughs> right. Is he one of the best in the sport? I would say, like, comfortably, yes. Like, now is he the best at, like, creating run value in the box? No. Is he one of the best hitters? Yeah, I, I think it's... Hard well, I mean, hard. he ha- he he clearly has the best hit tool. Like, you're not going to argue me. He clearly, <laughs> sure. he clearly has the best hit tool. Like, if that is how we wanted to find best hitter, I'm in no position to argue. Like, I'm more production driven than anybody else. You know that. I so like yeah. no, sure, but I I do think there should be a difference, and there isn't. Like, uh, people have dove straight into analytics without like while applying them without like defining them to me at least because I am a stickler for words. He literally led the league in hits this year. You know what I mean? Like he, there was he no one who had more hits than Luis Arise. He did. Like Aaron Judge, Shohei Otani, those are the best batters to me. And I, people are going to be like, what's the fucking difference? Like when they're in the batter's box, <laughs> other pitchers are like, I can't fuck up here because they're going to hit it a long way. When Arise gets in there, pitchers are like, I fucking don't know what to throw here because he's just going to make contact. He's going to shoot it over the third baseman's head and he's going to be standing on second base. Like that's <laughs> has to be as frustrating, just not as scary. I think, I think that last part, as much as I disagree with everything that came before, I think that last part is, makes a lot of sense though. Cause it, like it, I imagine that like, yes, it's way more terrifying to deal with Aaron judge. You, if you throw the right shit, you can get him out. It's just you gotta throw the right shit, and if you miss by whatever, that shit is gonna go to is, is gonna hit the four train. So like, right. I understand. Whereas Arise, like, bro, you can throw that shit at his head, and it doesn't fucking matter, because, <laughs> bro. He's not even there to he's not there to watch either. So no. like, you can throw it at his head, you can throw it at his feet, you could, you could throw it in off the plate, you could throw it. There, there's no real one spot you could be like, all right, I feel comfortable throwing this shit because that's his weak area. And so I for, imagine it is entire, uh, uh, immensely frustrating deal with him, yes. Yeah, it has to be. He also, like, 18 uh, ground into double plays this year. It feels like, like he had he didn't lead the league in ground, uh, GDPs any year, which feels almost impossible for a guy who's not striking out and we know is going to put the bat on the ball. Yeah. Yeah, I, he has incredible back control. And but one he, sacrifice fly is very funny. <laughs> one? That feels impossible. <laughs> I mean, had, that feels impossible. He had three each of the last two years. Like, it's just not something he's there for. He's like, if I'm hitting it in the he air, it's fine. It balls, I, mean, I guess that's, that's <laughs> the only way to put that. But still, you would think he would he would run into more than one by accident. Like, not even on something like, yeah, I'm trying to do this. But you would think, yeah, then again, again, hit tool. Like he He's not doing anything there. by accident out there. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. Yeah, hit the, like they, he here to hit the ball in the air. I think this is why there is an important distinction between hitter and batter. To me, I don't expect people to agree. I don't care. But the <laughs> difference is today in that first game, Braves-Mets, ninth inning, uh, 
after the Lindor when when the Braves are up. First batter, Matt Olson. Matt Olson, I think, inarguably a better quote unquote hitter right. uh, than Luis Arise. He takes that first pitch, swings at it, pops it up to short. Like and you, you, you're facing a pitcher who just gave up runs the inning before. He's on pitch 58 of the last 24 hours, <laughs> and you meekly pop up down one. That's more likely than not not happening to arise. You know what I mean? He's probably getting on base in that situation, or or at least you're, he's he's making decent enough contact where. Uh, it's a, it's it's a it's a good probability to get to base as opposed to what happened with Matt. Um, but I, I I will say obviously if Matt had hit a home run, obviously we'd be having a different conversation. No, no sure. doubt. Yeah. <laughs> obviously he didn't. He popped up. It hasn't been at last check the, the greatest of seasons for Matt anyway. Uh, I don't know if no. I feel like he just fell off in a way that's kind of weird. And I, I'm, I'm just gonna chalk it up to something we don't know about. That's that's what I'm gonna chalk to the show. I mean it's too. hard. He hit. 29 home runs. He had a 119 OPS plus. Like he was still yeah. an above average hitter. In contrast, yeah, he wasn't but, bad, but he came down from what? What did he do the year before? Uh, he had like right? 60 home runs last year. <laughs> yeah. 54 home yeah. runs. You yeah. know what I mean? Like he led the league in slugging last year. Right. Uh, right. Like I feel like he, I feel like he, something went on. Like you know, he had a lingering shoulder injury that we just didn't fucking know about, or some shit that we're gonna hear about next February. Like I feel like that's what, what, what went on with him because he just I fell mean, off. He the posted. Way. He's played 160, 162, 162 games as uh, – oh, this doesn't even have today's games because baseball reference takes forever. He's played 162 games all three years he's been a Brave. All three years. You know what I mean? Like, he's posted since he got there. That's his age 28, 29, 30 seasons. Like, he, he, I'm sure he's fucking tired. The Braves, <laughs> like, they, they make it to the playoffs every year. How long they're there is their problem, but they make it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm sure he's just tired. Like, he – 795 OPS, is that what you want? No, but the fact that he was sub 800 and still posted a 119 OPS plus says a lot about what he was contributing and the rest of the league. Yeah, I mean, he was good. Only yeah, five stack flies from Matt Olson. So it, <laughs> That's interesting, man. I, I wonder he's who, also, who, who leads the league in sack flies? I don't know. He's the he's only at double digits once. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to start looking just at random power hitters. Like, what did Soto put up? Soto had four. Sack flies just aren't uh, in abundance, it would appear. <laughs> Judge probably doesn't have many. They all just go over the fucking wall. Yeah, I, would, I bet he doesn't. Two! Two. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone get the – like, do they just not count sack flies? Uh, Vinny Pasquantino up? led Major League Baseball with 13. Who did? Vinny Pasquantino. He had 13. Okay. That makes he sense. He had 13. Up. Oh, Alex Verdugo had 10. Yeah. Dude, that makes morning track power, guys. Dude, no dude, disrespect to Vinny P. Plenty of disrespect to Verdugo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, Vinny, Vinny plays in a, home, a park that suppresses home runs. I'm sure it doesn't help. But yes. Yeah, man. That park is huge. Bro. Like, like sitting in seats, you get a, obviously a great feel for the park. Standing on the field is a different element, especially of, of one with like a game going on and, and fans in the stands. Like Kaufman, I don't even know how to describe it. Like it, it just it's no, it's not a fair comparison. I was gonna say it has to be like similar to how old Yankee Stadium felt because everything's just on top of you. Obviously, the people of Kansas City aren't lunatics, so it doesn't <laughs> feel like scary. But like everything. <laughs> built up around you in a way I feel like must have been similar. Like their scoreboard is the biggest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life with the crown yeah, on she it. Was massive. Massive. Like even on TV, it looks big, but in person it was three times larger than I imagined in my head. Like just out, even the walls were higher than I expected them to be. So I don't know, just an unbelievably massive field. Yeah, man, it, it, it is. And it's, it, it, that's probably why Vinny Vinny P got thirteen sack flies. Man, if he played another park, he probably have like four. <laughs> that seems to be the going rate <laughs> for sack flies. Yeah, flies. legit. <laughs> like everybody got four or two. It seemed like that was that was the only two numbers we heard. Four or two. Yeah, very so. Judge having two is very funny. It's like, why would I hit a sack fly? The wall's just three feet farther. 
Right. And the, I'll the just look at that forty feet. feet and and like, not a problem. If, if it don't go over the fence, it's going to a gap. Right. Uh, playoff bracket is set. Orioles, Tigers, I believe, leads off every day. I think they're just like, no one cares. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> like, what is that? Like the the MLB equivalent or near equivalent, I guess, of um, what they used to do with the Raptors? Yeah, they used, the, they, used, they used to put the Raptors on, on a 12 on NBA TV every first Saturday for the playoffs. Yeah, they were like, no one. Like, Raptors, <laughs> it Pacers, didn't matter who their fucking opponent was. None of that mattered. It was just, yo, uh, come 12 o'clock, Saturday, the first Saturday of the NBA playoffs, you was going to see the Raptors. If you wanted to, that is. You was going to see the right, Raptors. Right, yeah, I, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Me either. Well, you're going to see the Raptors if you want to see them on NBA TV. 12 o'clock, noon sharp, be there. Or Astros, the- Astros, Royals. I don't hate that series. I don't hate that series at all. Isn't it Astros, uh, Tigers? That's not what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the bracket updated three minutes ago on CBS Sports. So if they fucked it up, that's on them. What the fuck? No, it's Astros, Tigers, man. Again, I'm looking at it. <laughs> and that's on, what they have. I'm looking at it on CBS myself. CBS I'm, looking at, I'm, looking at the, I'm looking at the schedule. No, I'm looking at the schedule. Oh, I'm looking at the graphic. The graphic, if this is Astros Tigers, this is the stupidest graphic I've ever yeah, seen. It's it's Astros, <laughs> yes, yeah, it's Astros Tigers. Once the, the Tigers lost to the White Sox yesterday, that clinched the, the five seed for the um, Royals. But so, this yeah, says. It's Astros Tigers. This list, the Royals is the sixth seed. Like, I'm not making this up. This no, no, no. Like, I, I, I don't question that you're making it up. I'm just saying they're wrong. <laughs> like, the, their graphic is fucked, is what I'm saying. That's crazy. Why <laughs> their graphic is fucked, man. Why do they do it this way? I don't know. But And, and on top of that, Royals or um, Tigers, Astros is the one leading off every day. Yeah, that's what I thought yeah. I remembered. Uh, yeah. That's insane that they yeah. did that. <laughs> yeah. I was listen, I, I wrote some fucking notes down about that series. I was about to be really confused if you had told me it was it was fucking Houston KC is dead. I wrote down notes like all right, Houston, Detroit. Yeah, if you had told me it was Houston KC, I'd have asked a lot of questions on how the fuck we got here. It's hold on. <laughs> hold, hold on. Can I shut the fuck up, dude? Just allow it. Why wouldn't you allow it? Bang. Done. Brother, I'm not quitting. I'm certainly not quitting Google Chrome. Insane. Uh, let's see. Middle aged man tries to figure out graphic. Look at this fucking shit. <laughs> Yeah, they, get, they fucked that up. <laughs> yeah, fucked I'm up. not not oh, just man. out here like, oh man, like no, they very clearly have four or five I need tigers. Man, I, tigers I need so bad. Anyways, yeah, oh uh, yeah, yeah, they did. They got though. three six. Uh, yeah. That's not on me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really appreciate the lengths that you went to go to prove that it wasn't on you. Right? I mean, that's outrageous. That's, that's... no, but it, it's ridiculous that that's still up. That's ridiculous chaotic because like that uh, was that was the case like saturday like saturday afternoon that yeah that would have been that would have been accurate not, it's not saturday afternoon anymore that a was lot saturday. of that georgia was undefeated saturday like a lot changes <laughs> from saturday Fair. i don't want to hear what is saturday so yeah That's astros weird. tigers uh it's on abc which is also strange i, I don't i know they're owned by espn so it is the same thing but it's not abc no it's not all ABC doesn't get baseball, not in my America. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that's been the case for like what two, three years now. It's the first that's might have been before. Like I, like I know, um, Twins Blue Jays was on there. I think that was last year. Was it the year before? Yeah, maybe I remember that, I remember, but I, I but don't like, like. And Michael Can A Rod called the game, so okay. I was like, "Fuck, I just can't <laughs> escape this guy." Jeez. Uh, then Orioles Royals. On ESPN two, uh, <laughs> uh, that's at four, of course. Brewers, Brewers, Mets. I'm and now I'm like double checking with you because CBS can't be trusted. Uh, yeah, Brewers, yeah, 
Wait, actually, yeah, no, it is Bruce Metz. It is Bruce Metz. Okay, yeah. see, you fucking, Bruce you never Metz. know. To pause these people. Yeah, Bruce Metz. I'm about to yell at Chris Towers over this. <laughs> and <then> Pad- <laughs> Padres Braves is the nightcap. Yes. Uh, that was... I don't know. Like before today, I was high on the like. I thought the Braves were going to make it. I thought Chris Sale was going to play. Uh, I was pretty high on the Braves just because they're doing it differently this year. They always come in as the one seed. They cry. They get the week off. They lose. They say they're going to do it differently. They don't. The fact that they had to win and get in, I thought, okay, let's see the Braves with some momentum. They have to play all the games. Maybe this is their year. How it happened, I can't possibly be high on the Braves anymore. Uh, Padres, I'm relatively high on. I've been high on them the whole second half. Brewers, Mets, like I'm, I want to see how far the Mets can take like the Grimace, Pumpkin, oh my God, shit. Like that. <laughs> They've got the vibes correct for a team that can make a run, no doubt. Uh, Orioles, I just need to see them win a playoff game. One, before I start. <laughs> just one, before I can start I pretending they can I, do I anything. I don't need to see it. <laughs> and then Astros, Tigers, like Tigers would be a cool story. This is just kind of what the Astros do. So I'm, I'm I believe I believe somebody uh delivers the Astros the knockout blow when I see it. And, and I mean to be fair, people have. Like it's just not the team that I root for. Um, but yes, uh unfortunately. But um Houston Detroit I find to be interesting because it's it's the hot team coming in against the veteran laden playoff battle tested um quietly really good pitching staff they got in Houston quietly Mm -hmm. because it ain't like the names we're used to for them but like they were they they were I mean there's a reason they had the best record in Major League Baseball since May 1st and like a lot of it was Hunter Brown started throwing a sinker since he started throwing that sinker he has like a 2-7 year array which is like their best in the majors they got Kikuchi they remade him which was the most predictable shit ever basically uh he was really good down the stretch for him and Fromber is one of the best pitchers in baseball um, their bullpen is still good. They're hitting. Let me know when Jordan's status is is, is uh, shared with the public, and then I'll give an opinion on their lineup and how it matches up. If he's there, I still I still think they have more than enough to go far. If he's not, that that throws a very big wrench into things. But yeah, I mean, I think Houston's going to win that series simply because I think they have a better offense. The pitching, you could kind of kind of squint to make it a wash if you want to. Um, the thing with Detroit, like their pitching staff is good. They pitch they they pitch a lot of their games in a park that suppresses home runs, and Minute Maid is not that. So we'll see how that goes for them. They have had Tucker playing again too, uh, which yes. is helpful, and he's been amazing since he got back. Right, like that is for sure helpful. My my neighbors a. Uh, was a personal trainer in D1 sports forever. And he was breaking down Kyle Tucker's injury to me. And they were like, his, his leg is straight up broken. Like, it's, it is a broken leg. So it's just going to be a pain tolerance thing. Uh, I don't know. They've made some moves, too, where it's like they get Jason Hayward off the scrap heap. Obviously, no one's, like, shaking their boots over 2024 Jason Hayward. But it's stuff like that that I just it should be unsettling to other teams. Like they had John Singleton hitting fucking home runs last year. Like the Astros just do this. Bro, Martin Maldonado got big playoff hits for them. Like, sure. Martin, Martin Maldonado. Like, like, yeah, I'm not shaking my boots over Jason Hayward, but you know good and well if he gets any type of playing time, he's going to do something of significance. Something. For them. Yeah, absolutely. I know Diaz yeah, is going to catch, whether it's an important hit, whatever it is, he's going to do something of importance for them. And teams like this, like teams that genuinely have won, when they have a guy that's part of the core leaving, like they do in Bregman, like they got the standing ovations at home and all that, like they know he's gone. They know they're not going to re-sign him. They know he's going to go get a payday elsewhere, hopefully not Boston. Uh, Why not? On the wrong side of 30, uh, we don't need any infielders. Like all he does is hit right-handed. That's it. That's the only. <laughs> you see, I, I've seen, I've seen your tweets about that, and I, I, I feel so seen because it's like I, I've done this whole thing with Yankees and left-handed batters for four or five, ten, twelve, however many years. Like, oh, let's go get this guy. He, what, what, what's the, what's the pros of this? He bats left-handed. Uh, we don't got anything else outside of that. Like that's it. Like he bats. No, I mean, I do think like 
he would add something to the clubhouse they don't have. Like I, I do, they're they're pros to signing Alex Bregman. The cons are the Red Sox have proven to be very cheap, and if their two big contracts that they've given out are Trevor Story and Alex Bregman, like what do they expect to happen? Well, like what's the expectation? Uh, it's gonna be good. But yeah. No, it's like if they sign Bregman and then also do all the other shit they need done, I'll care significantly less. Just like if Trevor Story had been playing second this whole time because they had re-signed Xander and done other things, I wouldn't talk about him ever. It wouldn't bother me at all. But they didn't do that. So if they do Bregman, I expect them to go more that route, which would piss me off. Um, so I'm just very much looking forward to him signing with like the Dodgers. Someone, like just whatever, whenever that pass and tweet goes out, I can go, all right, moving on. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm taking Houston there. Tigers, hell of a season. I will say, Kerry Carpenter, man, I think he finished with 18 home runs. He was hurt a lot in the middle of the season. I expect, always, I expect him to go deep in that series. Yeah, he's a guy, like everything I said about Lindor also applies to Kerry Carpenter. Uh, just, just a guy who gets it. No, I, I like him. And like Parker Meadows, too. Like once he came back, yeah, like he, really he's been, he, he had an 833 OPS since he got off the IL, whatever it was. I think it was August 3rd, I think, something like that. Either way, he had a he had a really good – he he was a big part of the reason that they ended up making the postseason in the first place. So I think he's going to have an impact, too. I mean, it, it's – they did what the Red Sox were, like, too afraid to do, which is sell and call up a bunch of young talent. They called up Colt Keith. They called up Jackson Joe coming down the stretch. Sure uh, they called up a million bullpen arms that sucked in the minors and were awesome in the majors. Like they tried a lot of shit, which is what a team like the Tigers should do. Uh, like earlier in the year, they got uh, when Seal Perez was contributing. Uh, Riley Green has been steady. Like I, I won't say like he lit the world. On. Hey, eight twenty seven OPS this year. He, oh, he was good. Of, no, he was a yeah. good. No, I knew he was good, but I, I didn't know he had an eight twenty seven. Yeah, <laughs> he was good. I was surprised when I said it earlier too. Kerry yeah, Carpenter in a nine thirty two. This is what we're talking about. <laughs> this is this, he had eighteen home runs and two hundred and sixty four at bats. Like this is this is the guy. <laughs> he's really, he's really fucking good. He's unbelievable. He's really like this good. is. Like it's a shame oh. he got hurt because we'd be talking about him more if he did. Oh, uh, Otani wouldn't have even gotten any uh, press this year if Kerry Carpenter. We're talking seventy seventy. Uh, if if Kerry Carpenter plays a full one sixty two, seventy seventy. Okay, but it's like if they lose the Scooble game, like you know, thanks for coming out. You know what I mean? Like that. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Next yeah, try. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, they, yeah. They asked AJ Hinch about like what what his pitching plan for the rest of the series is. He's like chaos. <laughs> so yeah. Like, All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair Which, enough. Next. Rosenthal's or maybe Tim Kirchin. So someone wrote an article talking about them. Uh, and two other teams, but the Tigers specifically, just teams that have adapted how to use and deploy their bullpens and a more modern sense than other teams who just don't quite get it yet. So it's not that the Tigers, like you look at the pitching, the starting pitching matchups outside of the Scooble game, the Astros are going to have the advantage every time. However, overall pitching, I think it's a lot closer than it looks like on the surface. It, no, it is. They, they both have really good pitching staff. Both of them. Uh, again, Orioles, Royals. Teams that kind of limped into the place, the <laughs> the playoffs. Uh, Royals were awesome first half. Orioles were never as awesome as they were projected to be this year. Obviously, they're sitting here in the playoffs. Feel good about it. Where they win ninety games for the second year in a row. Yeah, ninety one games. Nothing to be upset about. But I think they expected to be where you guys are, not where they are. Oh, for sure. Um, the thing with the Orioles is. I their last two trade deadlines have been an abomination. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to find a softer word. I don't think I need one. It was an abomination, especially the second one where it's like, hey man, the league is wide open. They're telling you it's wide open. Look at the damn teams in the league. You have that much young talent. You have one of the better offenses in the sport. You have a glaring need. Your pitching staff is a need. And you're just like, eh. Like, why, why go balls to the wall and try and win a, cha a championship? Who would who would do such or put myself in the best position to win a title? Who would do such a thing? It's a joke. But that being said, 
they still have one of the better offenses in the sport. And while they don't have a lot of like, at least performance wise, they don't have a lot of like elite, elite talent. It's kind of just Gunnar Henderson and then a whole bunch of dudes who are either average or good. That's, that's more than enough. Like they had like everybody in that lineup. You, there, there's nobody in the Orioles lineup where you're like, wow, that's an auto out. And I know that that, that, no. that doesn't sound like a massive deal, but in 2024, you're damn right it is. Well, I mean, I do think you're underselling. Um, why am I blank? I'm Santander. Who oh, I know, I don't say his name right. I, I also don't care. Well, he ain't elite. Uh, He's good. Yeah. He ain't elite. He 44 home runs this year. I feel he, like that's he's good. Pretty elite. He's, <laughs> he's a good player. He's a good player. He's not an elite hitter. He's a good player. I think he's an elite power hitter. Oh sure, we could give him that. I, I think he earned it. I'm not giving him shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, man? Yeah, he went out and took that himself. Yeah, he uh, yeah, and he, he he terrorized. I don't know what his number is saying at Yankee Stadium. I know I'm gonna put up baseball reference. And he'll be like, yeah, he only has a 742 OPS, and I'm gonna be like, you're a fucking lie. There's no fucking way. But yeah, no, he's been he's been great. Uh, yeah. Arias has been strong for him, but more to your point where they don't have easy outs. I mean, we you talked about Matt Olson having a down here. Adley Rushman. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let me pull – I'm going to pull up someone real quick just to compare yeah. OPS. Yeah, not been great. I fear uh, – <laughs> When I saw his numbers were worse than Cedric Mullins, I was like, shit, we missed the plot. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, he has 709 OPS – uh, Connor Wong at a 758. So that yeah, happened. I mean, Ali was the third best catcher in the AL East this year. No, I mean defensively, he was. Uh, Connor Wong has no idea what's happening back there. So I'll, <laughs> I'll give him that. Uh, yeah. yeah. But for a guy who was like, I'm sure if you pulled the books, he got a decent amount of coin put on him for like MVP this mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Not quite. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's. Hey man, he's a what third year catcher? Yeah, and, and he just. Hey man, the good thing about the the good thing about players like Adley in the situation he's in, he has a dope playoffs and they win. Oh, uh, that's all that matters. Nobody, of course. Just, all right, well, of course. okay. Then he's he he's a he's a sixteen game guy. I know I know the total is wrong. I don't feel like counting. He's a sixteen sure. game guy, not a one hundred sixty two game guy, and that'll just be his new reputation. So. Uh, just have a big playoffs. Nobody will care. First three years, eight oh seven OPS, eight oh nine OPS, seven oh nine PS. Yeah, it's a tough drop off. Slogging went from four forty five, four thirty five to three ninety one, and it's really like the homers were kind of the same. Home runs and RBI last year he had twenty with eighty RBI. This year he had nineteen with seventy nine. The doubles, he had ten less doubles this year. Crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, like that, lost the wells. But yeah, carry on. This team's got a lot of buy in, uh, offensively, as you're saying. Really comes down to like, is Corbin Burns going to shove? And if Corbin Burns shoves, Grayson Rodriguez, I thought he was going to be back at mm-hmm. some point. It, it appears no. Um, <laughs> that obviously hurts. Um, that probably went into their decision making at the deadline a little bit too, but. I don't know. It's it's. I don't burns. know if the boys got enough pitching, man. We're going to see. I don't know if they got enough no, pitching. No, I mean, even last year, like, I almost give them more credit for last year's deadline because they went out and got Jack Flaherty, who's been Pitching awesome this right. year. It <laughs> didn't help <laughs> at all. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I can the respect point. them making that effort, even though at that so, time, like, we viewed Jack Flaherty differently than we view him now, obviously. Like, it was more – like, Jack Flaherty was kind of a reclamation project at that time, but – Still, he was, like, but- we we have it on record that he was really good at one point. So right. at least like you have the track record to go off of. Yeah, that's more where I'm at. Like there was something they could have done. Like I, I think it's just as simple as the Orioles can't really develop pitching, uh, and a lot of teams can't. It's not a shot at them. Uh, I don't know. The, the Orioles traded for Trevor Rogers, and it's like, why do you think you could do something with them that he can't? That, that uh, do something with him that they can't. Why? Right. Like, why do you think that? Like, I, I don't, and th- like, that's your big, that's your big pitching acquisition. Why? I mean, I would say Eflin was the, the big one. If the, if Rogers had hit, 
I, oh, bro, I, the, 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 the next day I, fr- I remember that Zach Eff was not a Ray anymore. <laughs> the first, like I just, and bro, what's funny is I saw him pitched last week live. I'm still <laughs> telling you, he's a, it still has not oh. registered for some reason that he is an Oriole, but either way, yes, he's a good number two starter and that's what he's going to be for them. So we'll see what happens with that. Brewers Mets is exactly why I tune in to playoff baseball even after the Red Sox have been eliminated. I cannot wait for that. Um, because they these two fan bases, I don't know if there's history there. None comes to mind off the top of my oh, head. Oh, there's history. Why? What did I miss? This year. Oh, sure. I'm more thinking yeah. like historic history. Like, oh, uh, no, I, man, it's the Mets and Brewers. Fuck history. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm I didn't put out the 86 uh, NLCS. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't. I no history there. No, the, I didn't. The Brewers were in the AL for Mad Law on top of that. I know history there. Also a fair point. Uh, yeah. uh, probably in 86. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when they made the move to the. to the. Um, no, actually. No, I, not, the the first was, game I ever watched Yankee Stadium was against the Brewers. So it was definitely after that. But when? I don't. Don't know. Yeah, that's right. definitely after that. Um, so yeah, Brewers, Mets, but like that, Brewers fans will, like I assume they're nice people. It's the Midwest. They're gonna leave that series win, lose or draw, hating Mets fans. No doubt in my mind. <laughs> it's e- it's it's easy to hate people from New York. So East Coast, like it, yeah, uh, it's, it's easy. I I I think personally, and maybe I'm biased because I'm from the Northeast. I think we're a little bit misunderstood, personally. A little bit. Like, yeah, we're a little bit aggressive, sure. But we're a little misunderstood. Like, we mind our business. We don't be, we bother nobody. Like, yeah, we're a little aggressive. We're a little heavy-handed with our stuff. But, like, we'll also, we'll also help you in, when you need it. And, I mean, we'll tell you fuck off when it's necessary. So, I, I think we're a little misunderstood. As soon as we're done helping. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, you got the directions. You got where you need to go. All right, fuck out of here, man. Oh right, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, like a, it's a mentality thing. People who can't, like when when people are like, look at me, and they're like, "You're very abrasive." I'm like, "You're some fucking pussy." Like, shut up. <laughs> I was like, like you, what are you talking about? <laughs> and, I, and I mean, like, when we say "look at you," we mean reading the book by its cover, or this is after you start talking. Which one is it? You like, I I think it's. How I look, I have no control over. Um, right, but you don't look like a you just you're just fucking big. Like you don't look right, like I know. the same person. You're just a large human being. Right. So. Which leads to people thinking right. I'm menacing, but it's right. more when I start talking and it's like I'm clearly a jovial human being. Like I clearly am sure. kidding, joking around nine hundred percent of the time. So when people are just like, man, that guy's abrasive, it's like, no, I'm not. You're an idiot. It's like you, <laughs> you grew up so soft. And I can't. I I'm six five, bro. Like, what do you want me to do about this, man? It's crazy. Uh, and Padres Braves. I was more excited for that series until today. Uh, now, I think this is maybe when the Braves are at their sneakiest. Is when you, I've counted them out. <laughs> now, now is when they go, but. I don't know. Today was such a, a fucking mess. Sale being out is a fucking mess. Oh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I counted out the Braves so long ago. <laughs> like one, one, once I saw, um, I forget who was the last injury that they had. That was like season ending. I can't remember who it was. Chris Sale. Uh, <laughs> before that, sorry, but like, yeah, I I counted them out a long time ago because it's just I don't feel like you're supposed to have that many fucking season ending injuries to actually go for, go places. And yes, I know. They won a championship without Ronald Acuna. I know they did this. Cool. Without Ronald Acuna, and then without Ronald Acuna and Spencer Strider, and then you have a whole bunch of underperforming dudes on the same team. Feels like a, a lot to overcome. Now, baseball is stupid like that in a way where the playoffs might start tomorrow, and then the Atlanta Braves are hitting like they did last year because baseball is really fucking dumb. So maybe that happens. I I would just be pretty surprised. Was it Austin Riley? Uh yes, exactly. Yes, that's who it is. Yes. Yeah, once he was yeah. like, all right, man, this is not their year, man. You you can't overcome that many season and injuries to all star players, bro. Like it's, again, it's tough. this is exactly when it happens. Like yeah. Michael Harris 
Michael Harris has looked awesome the last month after doing nothing uh, the previous. I just months. love how I just love how Michael Harris started started hitting home runs every single day once I got eliminated from my playoff teams with, with him. Oh, of course, love yeah, no, very love annoying. Uh, love this like Solaire, Solaire, we know is an October player. You know what I mean? Like he is that guy. Solaire been yawning the whole year. So yeah, so yeah, he's, he's, he's ready. Yeah, he's very very ready. Uh, so between that, there's two outfielders that would scare me. Gio Urshela, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like he's the best player in the league. He, If he's your Austin Riley replacement, it's a fucking good find late in the year. You know what I mean? If that's a guy you're you're just plugging in, fine with it. We talked about Matt Olson not having the greatest year. Same thing with Adley Rushman. If he turns it on in October, no one gives a fuck what his regular season looked like. Um, Kevin Biggio is apparently on this team. That's news to me. Excuse me? Since when? <laughs> Since when? I guess did he get waived by the Dodgers? I don't oh, know. Oh, he sure fucking did. I, that I knew. I didn't know he made it to the Braves. Oh, there he is. Uh, man, you want, you, you want to you, man I, I, I thought Kevin Biggio was going to be a nice utility guy, a utility type player for a long time. But boy, was I wrong. Woo. Oh, Ooh, he boy. Played. I was fucking wrong as hell. But. He played four games for the Atlanta Braves. I mean, the Padres are running out what? Um, Michael King. Uh, who else? Who else starts for that? Dylan Cease. Oh, Musgrove <laughs> Cease. Yeah, Musgrove Cease King. I'd be surprised if the Braves got out of that. Maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong. Wouldn't, wouldn't be the first or the last time. But they have that. They have a good offense. I'd be pretty surprised if the if the Braves make it out. And we know, and we know, sales out. So, right. They, mm-hmm. At least for this round, they also like they went out at the deadline. They got Jason Adam, which I think was massive. They get to use Waldron in the bullpen. They've got Peralta from your boys. Uh, Jeremiah Estrada was the most unhittable pitcher in baseball during like a month and a half of the summer. He's obviously come back down to earth, but is still filthy. Um, and Suarez at the back, like, I feel like he's, see, like, the most underrated closer in the playoffs? I feel like he might be. <laughs> he might be. We, we don't, no, no amount of time gets spent when we're talking about really good relievers on Robert Suarez, and all he's uh, done is really good. Like, all he's done. Horrifyingly good. Um, I was like, what was his ERA this year, like, 2-7? I think it was 2-7-5. I'll pull it back up. Yeah, and then last yeah, two, year I want to say two seven seven, right? Two seven seven career ERA of two eighty nine. Yeah, he's a really good fucking pitcher, man. Like the Padres, the the Padres have everything you would want to make a, a legitimate run at a World Series championship. Everything you want, like they have the hitting, they have the pitching, they have the relievers, they have everything you need. Yeah, I mean, uh. Going off of what we've been talking about, if Xander, who is an October player, has a great October, they're going to be like, this is the best contract we've ever signed. Uh, yeah, despite the fact right. that they, they it was obviously bad. Man, who cares? Uh, yeah, he's overpaid. So what? Did you see his numbers in October 2024? Bro, we do not care. Like, I feel like because it's the Padres, because of the offseason they had where they traded Soto, obviously they got – uh, like King, shout out to him. King was excellent this year. Bad, not bad. Mediocre first month and a half. Like, just fine. He was fine the first month and a half. Has been legitimately one of the better, like, top 15 pitcher in baseball the last three months. I tried to tell you about some Michael I mean, you, King. When I was right. Oh, you knock it off, shit. Holy. Knock it off. I said he would be fine. He's a really good pitcher. The, the Padres got a good package from the Yankees. Oh, that's and still not true. At me. Excuse me? That's still not true. How is it not true? They got you a top yourself. 20, they got a top 20 major league pitcher with like three years of team control for Soto. How is that yeah, not but, uh, year to year? That like I still don't view him as that year to year because that if you look at last year's top 20 pitchers, it's I don't think there's any sure. overlap to this year's top 20 sure. pitchers. Okay, fine. He's a really talented starting pitcher that they have under control for three years. Yeah, an unbelievable season, right? No doubt. They got a good package for him. There was one suitor, I'd like to remind you. There was one that's the suitor. point. Yeah, that's right. the point. 
<laughs> they didn't get a great package. They did, given the they, circumstances. They did. And arguably would have gotten a better package if there was even one other suitor. Sure, but right. that but but they, they they worked with what they got. They took like home I, the person that they took home, man. They they worked. Drew with Thorpe they did nothing this year. You know what I mean? Like I. <laughs> No, I got treated. Did he not? No they, shit. Yeah. <laughs> that, that doesn't, it's not a good thing. Uh, <laughs> it, it is. I, it helped him. Just because but, the White Sox are stupid doesn't mean he's all of a sudden a good pitcher. Oh, no. No, of course not. But they traded him for a good pitcher. See? They used that. Yeah, they took advantage of a dumb team. I agree. It'd be like that. Uh, Machado good. had the quietest, like, 30 home run season. Uh, Man, I was looking at his numbers the other day. I was like, I don't know when he did this because it felt it felt like all year I never heard shit about Manny until no, he, like the last two weeks of the year. I didn't hear shit about Manny. Played 152 games. Uh, <laughs> just another 800 OPS year for Manny Machado. So ho hum. Yeah, between like getting a rise. Obviously, he's not Juan Soto. Like, I wouldn't even make the hitter batter argument there. Like, Juan Soto is a professional hitter to the mm-hmm. core. Uh, getting him, though, and just being like, hey, we just need someone on base to get driven in. Last year, we were the worst team in one-run games that's ever existed. We just need to try and get more runs on the board. If you could help out, that'd be like, they'd already traded Soto. So, like, who's the best guy we could get to do that? Oh, yeah, the guy who's going to hit 200 hits. That'd be great. Uh, having him with uh, Xander Machado and Tatis, who Tatis is healthy, you know what I mean? Like right now, knock on wood, he's ready to go. He still hit 21 home runs this year in 102 games. Just stay off the motorcycles, my my boy. Uh, like eight, 832 OPS. Uh, Tatis could be due for like an all-time October. As long as they ain't standing in the way of the Yankees, I hope for it. But no, Tatis think, is really fun. So. Well, I don't want – and obviously Jackson Merrill, who we talked about already in this episode. Um, <laughs> the funniest outcome, and it wouldn't be that funny because it would require the Yankees making the World Series, but a walk-off World Series winning home run for Kyle Higashioka would be objectionably very funny. Like, it's just very funny. <laughs> Why, why, why do you want chaos, Coley? That'd be very funny. It, he did 17 home runs this year. It's not that funny for, funny for who exactly? Uh, 29 MLB fan bases. So millions of people. So my feelings just don't matter here? That's what we're doing? They get outweighed by if the masses are happy. That's what you should care about. Wow, are you really telling my my feelings don't matter? Wow, that's crazy. Wow. Wow. Again, it's it's the it's the train track conundrum. One person's feelings or everyone's feelings. Everyone's I, feelings. Fuck everyone's feelings. They don't matter. This is why. Fuck, this is fuck everyone's this. feelings. My feelings take precedent, and that would upset me deeply. No, thing. <laughs> no, thing. nobody needs that, bro. Nobody needs that. No, that's I mean, unbelievably unlikely to put it lightly. Um, but yeah, the Padres, when we were in Worcester, having Section 10 Day, someone asked me my World Series pick then, and that was the end of August. I said the Padres, they're, they're here right now. They've got as good of a top four in the lineup and as good of a top three rotation-wise. Like, you Darvish, 43-year-old you Darvish is still here. He can make things happen, even if, like, I mean, again, he's <laughs> 331 ERA and 16 starts this year like that. If he's going to pitch at all, that's a weapon to have. He, he just he, he you just need whatever four good starts over the course of a, a long playoff run. So yeah, just a month, right? So they don't need him. They don't need him out there every every five days for six months doing just that. And no. he's well rested. He, he ain't throw that many innings during the regular well season. <laughs> he's very fucking well rested. His arm is ready to go. He ain't he ain't pitched that much in the regular season. So all right. that and that and he's what the, like the number four starter. Yeah, I'm looking at depth charts on MLB. They get him at three, but they also have Musgrove two, and that's obviously King. Yeah, yeah. So that the Padres got it. They got everything you want, man. Yeah, if Cease King, and again, I that Jason that when 
when they got Jason Adam and they they gave up Adam Mazur and one other guy, someone who used to have helium and, and has since not been Oh, free. Shit, I forgot his name, man. It's a pitcher. Fuck. It is. They gave up two pitchers, but Mazur, we knew, was trash. He came up this year and was bad. Like, he was – he's not a strikeout guy even in the minors. Like, he just kind of gets by. Uh, they spot started him a couple of times. It did not go well. The Marlins were like, sure, we'll take – or the, the Rays, excuse me. The Rays were like, sure, we'll take him. Jason Adam was the kind of arm that if the Red Sox have got him, I, I think we're in the playoffs right now. Like, that's how good Jason Adam is. Um, I, like, D- Dylan this, Lesko. Sorry to cut you off. Yes. D- D- Dylan, Dylan Lesko. Lesko. Okay. Yes, okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, so it's like they gave up a name and another guy who is like quadruple A depth. Not at, for what arms we're going for, not like a crazy package. Right. Jason and, Adam, and, and, and my thing is like, I, I, I still think in Major League Baseball, when it comes to the trade market, there, there there's a weird disconnect between, okay, we will pay more if closing pitcher, CP is next to your name on the depth chart, as opposed to, you know, setup man or right. middle relief man. Like, even, even if, like, they're the same caliber of pitcher, like, you'll pay a little bit more for the guy who has the closing experience, which – and not even a little bit more in some cases because if Jason Adams was a closer – Ain't no fucking way he goes for that low. Uh, no, no way. And and he had no. multiple years of team control left on top of that. Ain't no way he goes for that low. Because he went for Adam Mazur, who, like, organization he's a guy. kind of fuck, basically. Yeah, he's a guy. And um, Dylan Lesko, who can't throw strikes. Like, that's right. what he went Which, for. The, I understand the Rays taking that gamble. Like, other yeah, teams, yeah, yeah, that yeah. package isn't. Doing like sure. that, you might not get Lucas Sims for that package because the the Reds right. have no idea what to do with Dylan Lesko. The Rays are like, sure, we'll take that guy and we'll gladly right. take the risk. Right, because guess what? If if it doesn't work, we'll just try and do it with somebody else. We'll trade next year. We'll trade whoever the fuck is an expiring for another fucking big arm who can't who struggles throwing strikes, and then we'll try our hand at that shit again. So, yeah, they, I mean, they're. I didn't realize how many lefties they had in their bullpen. Four lefties. Who are they? Wandy and who else? Tanner Scott, uh, Yuki Matsui, and Adrian Morajan, who I assume isn't... Yeah, he was solid this year, too. God damn, this might be... This is an unbelievable bullpen. <laughs> no, the, 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 the Padres are legit good, man. No, I came into this speaking highly of the bullpen, and then every guy I click on pitched in sixty games and has like a one seven ERA. Like it's like, all right, like I, I <laughs> every the more every we talk, single the more guy. I wanna, the more we talk, the more I want to change my World Series pick. Yeah, I mean, because like, I came into this like, all right, Yankees over Phillies in six. I'm a change. It. Yankees over Padres in six. That's what I'm going with. Yeah. They're gonna hoist up the trophy in the in Yankee Stadium this year, baby. I mean, probably not, but uh, <laughs> there they are. It is open, like it's it's. I'm gonna go Astros, Padres. Um, yeah, I, I picked the Padres a few months. Ah, it's hard to ignore the Mets. What's the bracket? When would that happen? So it would be Mets, Padres, NLCS. Yeah, I'd watch that. Um, and then was it Yankees Astros ALCS? Mm-hmm. I've seen that before. Uh, it's d- different this time around. <laughs> sure, <laughs> you, you got exercise demons to get to get to where the fuck you want to go. They going down. Book it. <laughs> Sure. If they even get uh, to the ALC, if they're going down. Book that for shit. For sure. I think they're much more worried about the Tigers and Guardians. They have maybe the easiest draw out of anyone now that I'm looking at it. Now that I'm looking at the right fucking bracket. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Tigers, uh, Tigers, Guardians. Is they get the, uh, I mean, they get the AL Central. Like, that's that's, that's been crazy. really profitable for the last, like, what, 20 years? It's been really profitable. That's, yeah, that's your type B. That's, <laughs> oh, man, that's oh, Yankees yeah. type B. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was I was, I was, was upset that to see that the Astros got that draw. I was upset. I mean, listen, we're talking about the Central being weak. They got three teams sitting here. I understand. I don't fear them either, but they do have three teams sitting here. Am I uh, supposed to care? No, I didn't say that, but they do have three <laughs> 
<laughs> in half the AL uh, bracket. Uh, that says everything about the status of Major League Baseball in 2024 is what that says to me. Sure, I don't disagree. Uh, I think the 16 playoff is largely a failure, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> agreed. Here we go. Uh, like that was the last rant I went on. Like there are too many Red Sox fans like thrilled that they almost made the six seed. It's like the six seed. What the fuck are we talking about? The six seed. Well, I used to, we used to get like we used to go out and spend hundreds of millions of dollars if we didn't get one of the top four seats, let alone the six, which we don't even get. That's the we're throwing parades because we went 81 and 81. The fuck out of my face. <laughs> and, and on top of that, like they missed the playoffs five of the last six seasons. Like I'm not even bringing that up to talk shit, but oh, like, exactly. that's the, yeah. what's happened. And yet people are like patting themselves on the back for. Almost made the six seed. Like, put the banner up. Almost made the six seed. Like, what? Are, what are we doing here? On, because uh, they won the last game of the season to go eighty-one and eighty-one. Um, since they won the World Series, they're four thirty-six and four thirty-four. So, game over five hundred over a six-year stretch. As mid as it gets. Yeah, and it's largely backpacked by the 92 and 70 season in 21. Because other than that, they've won 80 games. They won 81 and 81 last year, 84 and 78 the last year of Mookie Betts. What do you make of this whole Kenley Jansen business? I love it. Uh, not because Kenley is like my boy or anything like that, but it's like – that doesn't happen to teams, respectable baseball teams, ones that have standards. So if, if anything, it should be, and it happens so publicly, it has to change how they're doing business. Like it, it has to, like they, A, I, I, like, I do think him, Cora told him like, you can go, it doesn't matter. Um, and I think anyone that wanted to sign Kenley Jansen is nonplussed by it. like I'm not gonna fuck like it, it affects us for agency zero, it affects us legacy zero, all that. Um, I I I hope it pissed off the right people because they it it should have been like a big mirror held up and it's like this is who you are now, this is what you've become. Uh, guy, like I him leaving like really shouldn't bother anyone. Like you were out of it. He's a free agent closer. <laughs> like, when was he going to pitch, anyways? Uh, so it shouldn't bother anyone, but the way it happened, the way certain players uh, gave anonymous quotes about it, like, I, I hope it, it pissed off the right people. The players being like, he didn't even learn our names. Like, yeah, because you, you guys stink. Like, <laughs> why, why would he waste his time? <laughs> Learning. Games. No, that quote was insane, man. That quote, like, and I feel like, hey, man, if you're gonna if you're gonna put that quote out there, man, you gotta put your name on it, man. Because it wouldn't matter. He doesn't know who you are, right? No idea. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, Tyler O'Neill said that. Who the fuck's Tyler O'Neill? I don't know. Who that is. <laughs> Let me Google Tyler O'Neill. Who is that? Like, oh, that big dude in left field. Okay, I'm got familiar. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't ring any bells. Uh, <laughs> crazy and core was rightfully mad at the players just being like why would you say this like why you're giving anonymous quotes outside the locker room like it's it's the right kind of uh shitty end of the season that they deserve i, I agree and i revel in it i love it I, I hope they have like five six more seasons straight just like that Person. They've done it all to themselves. Like I can't be like, oh, this didn't break our way. Like, no, it's all self-inflicted. Literally all of it. Uh, um, so that's where it's just like, I, I'm not going to cry for the team. I'm also not going to change my standards just because they decided to act differently. Other fans are more than happy to change their standards, and that's the stupidest thing to me. It's like, why succumb to their like idiocracy? Like, there's no reason for it. Like. Mookie Betts only played 116 games this year. He still put up an 863 OPS, 145 OPS plus. Played shortstop and right field and all sorts of stuff. Can't imagine why you'd want to pay a guy like that. I mean, maybe as the facts change, people's standards do. 
they can't like uh, they just can't like they're they held like the most nonsensical uh press conference today with sam kennedy and alex core and craig breslow and like core is the only one even like trying to give some hope like obviously kennedy and breslow are like well we remember what we fucking said last off season we can't do that again uh so they i i I do feel bad for Sam Kennedy because he just has to be the face of ownership despite not being an owner. Like he has to eat all of their shit, which is a shitty stop. Yeah. It's a shitty place to be. Uh, So like he, like I know he wants to fix this. He doesn't sign the checks. So like, there's only so much he can do. Uh, We'll see. Like I said, if they go out and they sign Bregman and they're like, we had three starters, make 30 starts this year. We don't need to in- invest in the rotation. It's like, okay, like, great. Can't wait to see how this goes as we all know it will. I I, I, I hope, <clears throat> I, I truly hope that they don't invest any money in the team. And they continue to go down this path. You, you have a healthy Trevor story. I think that's all you need. There's no such thing. Um, what do you mean? He's healthy now. He, he just passed. Let me get the final total. He just passed. Yeah, he's officially played 163 games for the Red Sox. Uh, so that's big. He's officially over one season of service through three years. That's unbelievable. Got to pay a guy like that. Okay. He's halfway through his contract. Love it. Were, were, were they <laughs> were they supposed to know that he would just start getting perpetually injured? Are they supposed to know that? Well, like every other team in the league did. So yeah, uh, <laughs> like, yes, it was known he was he was had stuff going on. Like there was a reason there were only two teams who even thought about signing him. His medicals were bad. Okay, well. Like, he didn't have a history of injuries, but he did, like, Jack Flaherty doesn't have a history of injuries. The Yankees said, we'll pass, because we look at his medicals. Like, that's... That, that pissed me thing. off, by the way. But, yeah. yeah. But, like, it, just because it's worked so far, like, I understand. It was a half-season risk. The Yankees could have afforded to do it. I understand all of Exactly that. why it pissed me off, yes. No, I get... Trust me, I get the Red Sox should have been in on for the same reason. Um There's a difference, I think, mid-season versus you have all the free agency... Yeah, 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 no, yeah. no one else even trying to sign this guy. That's what it's just like, huh? You got all the maybe. time. You got all the time in the world to either a do your homework, b do your homework after you're thinking about signing the guy, or c just change your mind and scrap the shit all together. You have a lot yeah. of time to do any of these things, and they did none of them. None of them pissed me off. Uh, so that's listen. If he's healthy next year, great. You know, I'm not actively rooting against him. Like, I, I prefer he stop proving me right time and time. Like, Michael King proved me wrong. I gave him cry. I tipped my cap. Michael King proved me wrong. I'm not going to be right every time. Trevor Story's 0 for 3, as he typically is. So this, is why he wants to, this is why he wants to shoot you the farewell, bro. Shoot the farewell, which is why. Again, he, like, good for, like, when, when they come out and they're like, we need to trade Tristan Casas, we got to build around Trevor Story. It's like, Excuse me? What are they? I mean, that's not exactly what they said, but oh, when, oh, oh, I, I the Rosenthal that. piece that came out like a month ago where they were talking about the Red Sox offseason, like primer, they listed a bunch of positions. They're like, Devers could DH and Casas could get traded to Seattle for pitching. Trevor Story will play shortstop. And I was just like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, we're talking about all these insane moves, but the one thing that's locked in is our shortstop. That's all right. All right. Sure. Sure. No problem. I mean, Tre- Trevor Story ain't lose it, man. He just got hurt. Like he's back. Every he's year. healthy now. Like he, he he's gonna have a <laughs> nice season for for Boston next year. He's I had his I, best. I, they'd be crazy to give up on that. He's had his best season still at second base. Uh, people want to keep yelling at me like that's not true. You need to give him a, a full season at short. See what he could do. We've tried. We. <laughs> I mean. You, you have, his, about body, his body failed him. His body won't fail him next year. That'd be great. That would definitely be helpful. We'll <laughs> see. Uh, feels like we know how the 32-year-old will react. Uh, 
Like we signed him when he was 29, by the way. Like he was two years younger than Bregman's going to be in free agency. Mm-hmm. That's where it's just like we want our left side of the infield to be Alex Bregman and Trevor Story because they're right-handed. That's that's how we're all right. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you trade Tristan Casas to get more right-handed hitters. No, they're only trading Casas for pitching, it sounds like. But I already know that's going to be Brian Wu, and I know he's going to get hurt immediately because he gets hurt every game he pitches. Uh, <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. You're, you're convinced they're actually going to trade him? Yeah, like, I don't think they like him. I don't think they like him as a person. <laughs> okay, okay, me either. Me either. But I thought I was just talking shit. Like, I was just a guest because I hadn't talked to you about it, per se. But, no, I, I think um, he's done. Yeah, I like I, I feel like his type – is not necessarily for like management types in general. Like unless you're just sure. gonna go out there and be so dominant that we just don't give a fuck about your personality, which he has not been yet. I no. I have a high opinion of the guy as a player. I feel like you're you're gonna if you're gonna talk about a 2024 season, but well, see, this is what we're talking about. I, I feel like you're ignoring a large part of context. Like you know, somebody who gets paid to swing hard, having a fucking rib injury that you have to right. rehab from mid season. But yeah, he's he's eccentric, man. Not everybody goes for that, especially not fucking management. But he's no, eccentric. But, too. Like he's he's not a bad person. That's where like I unless you're like Marcelo Zuna, for example, like that I can understand being like we gotta get this guy. We gotta just cut like Domingo Herman. We just gotta get rid of him. Like get out, get away. Right. This is not a bad person. Like from what I can tell, he's not a bad bone in his body. He's just like. Paints is like he's just a, a zoomer, like he's a classic Gen Z kid. I like there were gonna be more of those, so you're just gonna say like no to all of them. That's that feels they insane. Might. That I feels think insane for this hell, too. But they might over the last three years, he's played 222 games, by the way. So 60 more than your 160 million dollar shortstop. Uh, and those are his rookie year, his full rookie year. And this year, uh, so even with the broken ribs, he played three times as many games, two and a half as many times as Trevor Story. Uh, 830 career OPS, 125 OPS plus. He's 24. Got to get rid of him quickly. <laughs> get him out. <laughs> I hope they do because I think he's, I think he's terrific. I hope they They're do. They're going to. Like I'm. My like my ideal off season because it sounds like they're going to trade Casas to Seattle. And they're going to sign Alex Bregman, or they're going to sign Adamas and move Adamas to third, which also would piss me off. Like I would love Willie Adamas, but only if he's going to play shortstop, and you're going to get rid of our current shortstop. If you're just adding him to the left side of the infield, I think that's dumb. Uh, my preferred off season is to not spend a dollar and to play Von Grissom at third, play Christian Campbell at second, play Roman Anthony in left. That's it. Christian Done. Campbell is that close to the majors? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I, I know, he, I, I know he like he ascended up um, rankings list. I didn't, I didn't know he was that close to the major. How old baseball? Uh, no, because he was a three year college guy. All right, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, no, sense. he wasn't straight out of high school. Uh, Got it. Okay. All right, he may have been right, a two year right. college guy. Yeah, he's he's gonna be twenty three next year. He's twenty two now. Okay, so all right, so he's old. he's old. Well, older. Excuse me. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not 19. Like, he's not. Right. Uh, okay. Like, I'll, Christian Campbell, I know people have only, like, really heard his name. I know I'm a sick person for knowing as much about him as I do. But he's, like, yoke. Like, he's a, an adult. He's getting an adult. <laughs> uh, okay. Got it. He's going to rake. Uh, and that's, by the way, that's two right-handers right there. I've had people be like, Von Grissom doesn't have the arm for third. Raphael Davis does have the arm for third. How's that going? You know what I mean? Like he's Von Grissom has the glove for third. That's what I care about. Our shortstop doesn't have the arm for short. No one has a problem with that. No problem you, at all. You just can't help yourself. It's true. Like I, I, I just want people to be consistent. Like if, if it's going to be a problem for one guy, why would it not be a problem for the other? That's where I lose everyone. Like everyone loses me immediately. But I, I have no problem if Story's going to be a shortstop next year. Like I understand he's going to miss. Like he's not playing one sixty two. But the best you can hope for is. 140. I think that's a fair benchmark. I don't think he's going to hit it, but 140, that'd be great. That would help tremendously. Just defensively, we know what his bat's not going to do. So if he can play defense for 140 games, that helps us. That raises our floor. You're talking about 
like legitimately taking 100 runs off the board for the other teams. Legitimately. That's how big his glove would be in the field. Von Grissom at third. Von Grissom hit the week and a half he played in September. Now, that's not a massive sample size by any stretch. I know his throwing motion from second is weird. Like, it, he's too close. I don't know what it is with some guys. They just can't throw from second. His glove plays at the major league level. He was a shortstop for the fucking Braves. Like, that was what he was doing. I feel like he could handle third with the glove just fine. Is he going to bounce some throws? Definitely. Right? Devers throws him into the stand. So, it's like... <laughs> I'm fine with the op the other way. If the glove's also going to improve, like at some point we're going to have to improve the defense. It's not going to happen until Devers is the DH. They're talking about trading Casas and putting Devers at first. Fuck out of here. Like that's so <laughs> stupid. So <laughs> dumb. <laughs> DH. What would be the problem with Devers at first? I can only imagine. Like I can only imagine the problems. Like uh, scooping a ball is so difficult. It's not an easy thing to learn. Like from Moneyball, when they're like, how difficult is first? It's easy. It's fucking hard. Like, it's hard. Uh, I don't know that that's what I need him to do. Like, you have, you're involved with more plays per game than you are if you're playing at third. Like, they're, you can have whole games where it doesn't get hit to third. At first, they're throwing to first. I guarantee they'll throw to first. I would just rather eat DH. Like, I, DH, wait a year. Vladdy's probably going to be a free agent. Do that. Like, if, but put your hat in that ring if you want to invest money. I don't, I don't, I don't that makes that. so, but like, if you think about it, I, I know you don't want that for good reason. But all. you want, I, I tip my cap to Michael King. I haven't heard you say a fucking peep about Vlad. Um, I, I said two episodes ago, he had a, he's, he's having a great year. Um, but I, I, will, I will, I'm not going to tip my cap. You don't need to see my hairline. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, good job, Vlad. You had a great year. Uh, no, no, like, no, um, no bullshit. You did. I'm spending a bunch of money on Bregman a year before Vladdy comes up and then being like, ah, we just spent money would be such a fucking post Mookie Red Sox thing to do that. it I expect it. I want that. Uh, spend on it's Bregman. Very likely to happen. Like, I'm, how, many, how, many, how many rings does Bregman have? And how many does Vlad have? Right. People will unironically say that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He absolutely will. They won't think at all. Super pedigree. Don't say that shit. I mean it. They won't think for a second like, man, Vladdy endeavors wherever you hit them back to back would be fun. No, I don't need that. Oh, I don't need that at all. Exactly. At all. No, thank Vlad and like the thing is with Vlad, like, like I've made my jokes. Obviously, we had an entire episode ducking on Vlad. So sure, my main issue. We uh did not. We did not. You did. I mean, we are on the show together, so I meant not that you. I defended him the whole time. I know, but I know we are we do the show together anyway. The thing with Vlad is like he gets to Fenway and he's like, "Yo, fuck ground balls." That is terrifying. <laughs> you understand? Like, he gets to feed like, "Yo," he sees the wall and he's like, "Launch, launch, 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 launch." That's all he got. Everywhere else, like Vlad is like, "Well, like this season he rectified that a little bit, but before that it was like, ah, you know, if I hit these ground balls hard, they'll get through." Fenway, he's like, yo, fuck ground balls. I see the wall right there. That is terrifying. No, thank you. If I live my whole life with no Guerreros playing for the Red Sox, I I don't even know why I talk out loud because obviously no one's listening to me. <laughs> um, like, I, I feel the same way about Kyle Schwarber never playing for the Yankees. Like, to a way, way, way lesser degree. Sure, but, yeah. Okay. I feel the same. Like, there's no re- Kyle Schwarber's played for, played for like fucking five teams the last like three years. There's no reason why one of them wasn't the Yankees. It, it irks me to death. But, but like Kyle Schwarber was the most available player of all time coming off the Cubs. No one did. Yes. He signed the Nationals. He signed the Nationals. Signed him. Like yeah. that's insane. That's, right, right, right. And then the Nationals trade him like the halfway halfway through his first year there. If I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and we were like all set. Uh, and like it just, <laughs> just, 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 I mean, he seemed like he's found a home good for him, but like, oh, he loves it in Philly. In Philly yeah, loves and Philly seems to love him back, so like, great for him. But like, him not playing for the Yankees, it, it irks the fuck out of me. Like, you guys, at least up until the last couple of years, y'all like home runs, y'all like walks. Not many people do that better than him. No, irks no, me. It's insane. Um, but the only way I would even entertain trading costs is if you had some like illegal backdoor deal with Vlad already to sign. You know what I mean? Like you can't because then it's like, okay, I get it. Like I 
definitely get it. Uh, but for the thing I've been saying on Section 10, I'll say here, this isn't going to be the last offseason ever. You know what I mean? Like the Red Sox have a young core. If you think you have to fix everything this offseason just to appease fans, you're so lost. Like you have no direction. That would piss me off more than them spending a billion dollars on just guys. You know, I mean, that would infuriate me. I'd much I think, rather. Than I, I think they need to listen to their fans and spend up and get guys with chips. Listen, if they spend on pitching and like if they go out and they get uh, Buddy from the Braves, who's about to hit free agency, if they get Corbin Burns, if they trade for a guy, like they have enough pieces to do all of this. Like, I'm not saying just sit there and do nothing. There are ways to have a, a fine off season without having a dumb off season, and I fear like they're going to have a dumb off season. I, I hope that they do. And I the whole Vlad to the Red Sox thing gives me anxiety. I don't need it. Like it makes way too much sense for both parties, too. It's not even like it's for one of the like it makes way too much sense for fucking both of them. And I don't need it. My only saving grace here is that he might be too expensive for Boston. Maybe not, if they if they sign Bregman, he will definitely be. Yeah. Right. Like I, I think he yeah, because Bregman Bregman's probably getting nine figures, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, he's not signing for less than a hundred. Yeah, I feel like especially after what him. Chapman just got. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That did happen. Oh, <laughs> and and what are the Giants doing, man? Like we don't have enough time to get into that. Uh, but like, bro, I, in baseball, because I, I know basketball, we have Jerry West. When the fuck has hiring the former player ever worked out well? The former hero player, whatever, hometown hero, franchise icon. When the fuck has that ever turned out well? When? Uh, in baseball, I, the Chris Young, kinda, from Texas. He was I mean, we we, we doing a whole lot of heavy lift to call him icon. Sure, yeah, I don't even mean that. I was just thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah no, right. former I player, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. That's worked before. I'm talking about just the, I, the, 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 yeah, we love this guy. He's one of our best players in franchise. When the fuck has that ever worked? I don't know. Like, did. Who signed this Chapman contract? You know what I mean? Like, who negotiated did. this? Did Allegedly, Jose did. Yeah, okay. that's what I saw. Yeah, he would have to have because that'd be insane to let Farhan sign it and yeah. then be like, "By the way, yeah, you're fucking." Like, yeah, like, that be, <laughs> uh, that, I mean, that's what the Red Sox did with Dombrowski. Essentially, they're like, "Yeah, sign all these guys, and then you're out of here, pal." Like, <laughs> so that's like I've seen it before for sure, but this just happened so close to one another that I was like, "Dude." This had to have been Posey, but yes, Chapman got six for one fifty. So Breckman's yeah, six for one eighty. I like Chapman. I like Chapman a lot, but damn, bro, six for one fifty. I would have him. I was on here all winter saying sign Chapman for six for one twenty. He would have taken that, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, legit. And yeah, Absolutely. that's another thing. That, that's another thing about it. It's like the the contract itself is fair. Like, I want to make that clear. The contract itself is fair. It's more so that, yo, you had an entire offseason assigned to something similar, and you didn't. And you wouldn't have had to pay as much either. Like, there's, no chance, there's no chance Chapman's getting six for 150, whatever, six, seven months ago. There's no chance. No. None. They signed him for three for 54 with opt-outs after every year. Right. <laughs> there's no fucking chance. Like, you're telling me he wouldn't have taken, like, six for 100? But maybe he does, right. maybe he don't. You got to try. I would have been shocked if he did Right. Genuinely shocked. Because his market was dry. Just Hence why dry. he signed that fucking deal. <laughs> his market was dry. If the Red Sox had signed Matt Chapman, A, he's a right-handed bat. B, he could have played shortstop all year for you. And I, like I see the best shortstop of all time, no, that's why they put him at third. But he's better than everyone else we trot out. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Devers would have dh They clearly hate Yoshida. <laughs> But they also probably would have tried Devers at first this year because Casas got hurt. So it's like, I don't I don't know. I would have rather have signed Matt Chapman last offseason than signed Alex Bregman this offseason. And I'd rather sign Vladdy next year than do either of those things. I, I think the Red Sox should stick with the players who have the championship pedigree and the experience in, in the playoffs as opposed to going to getting Vlad. I don't – Vlad ain't got no playoff wins. He ain't got no wings. Like, what are we doing here? You're not wrong. But <laughs> he doesn't have those things. He doesn't have those things. Um, he somehow has a gold glove. He doesn't have. <laughs> he does. 
<laughs> he does. And I mean, to be fair to him, he did have a couple of good years at first. I don't know about no gold glove kind of good, but he did. He had a couple of good years at first. But I, Age says gold glove. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I know. I'm, I'm just talking about the validity of it. No, I, I don't, I don't I know. know about that. Um, Very strange. But we, we've seen that gold gloves tend to be a little shaky on the validity part of the gold For gloves. For sure. On both sides of it, guys who do and don't have it. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I would. I would shop Duran. I would uh, extend Anthony. I would extend Christian Campbell, and I would. And that's how I would look for pitching. I would go shop Duran, coming off of an insane season. Because even if you look at the projections, he's going to be your left fielder next year, which I don't care about. <laughs> Ship him out. I mean, maybe maybe you should trade Meyer too. Well. I, t- prospects don't have the same uh, value in the offseason. Like teams are trying to build their major league teams in the offseason. So that's where it's like, I'm not against trading Meyer like ever. Um, but for the offseason, especially when he's not healthy, like he didn't finish the year healthy, that's where I don't know that now is the time to do it. I think you let him start the year next year, and then if anything, he's your big deadline piece. If you know Scooble becomes available, or if something like that happens, like if the Tigers go back to being the Tigers next year, that's one thing. If someone else, you never know who's going to become available. You know, I mean, if someone else becomes available, then you talk. Uh, I think the most interesting thing that happened to the Red Sox so far is that Heim Bloom was named uh, the PBO of St. Louis Cardinals. Oh, he was? Okay. Yeah. Good for him. So I would assume he wants somebody that he drafted or, or had parts of that he thinks the Red Sox either undervalue or don't know what they have or he overvalues any of those. I'm not just blaming the Red Sox. Uh, and I'm sure there are people <laughs> within the, the Cardinals organization that he has no interest in. Uh, so I would be – Nolan Arenado, future Red Sox third baseman. I mean, when does his contract expire? I'm not against the idea. idea, They they are firmly uh, firmly, um, pro-trading him because they they already put that shit out. (laughs) They already put feelings out in public. Like, yeah, you know what? Sonny Gray, Nolan Arenado. um, I forget who the third name was. Oh, yeah, Wilson Contreras. Like, like, we we cool with y'all taking any of these players. That's September 30th. They're already telling us this. So Arenado's got three years left. I'm all set. (laughs) I mean, it's three years. It's a very affordable three years. No doubt. It definitely is because the Rockies are paying $10 million of yeah, those dollars. It's a very affordable three years, and, and Nolan's a Hall of Fame caliber player. You should go get him. Nolan's sick. Like, I definitely don't have a problem with him. I have a problem with rebuilding the Rockies' left side of their infields. Uh, a big problem with that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, pass. Like, if, if they want to do it the other way, if they want to swap out Mason Wynn for Trevor Story, I'm in. Nah, I, I think you should. I think you guys should just trade for Nolan Arenado, bring the band back together, and then flourish. I think Jordan Walker hits right handed. I'd take Jordan Walker. No, thank you. Because they'll <laughs> figure out how to use them all of a sudden. Nope, 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 right. nope, nope, no, no, thank you. No, pass. I've already seen because Sonny Gray was another guy they said they were trying to get rid of. And I've already seen Red Sox fans being like, you got to go get him. A, he was a free agent last year, and we had no interest. Uh, B, he's going to be 35 next year. Like, what are we talking about? It, it, I don't know. Maybe it's just maybe it's just how Sonny Gray looks. I'll never view Sonny Gray as old ever. Like, every time yeah, I hear he, his age, like, year after year, I'm like, damn, he's that old? His name's Sonny. Uh, like, yeah, that doesn't, yeah, that doesn't help. I can't take nobody named Sonny seriously as an old no. as an older person. I just can't, bro. Your name no, is Sonny. And I'll also just never think like he was so bad for the Yankees, so bad. Like I, he's only been bad in the AL East. That's it. Everywhere else, he's been good. You just can't bring that guy back. I mean, you can. No, you can. I think he would like jokes aside. I think I think he would do. I wouldn't want him in Boston. I think he'd do fine in Boston, personally. Uh, but I, but I, but like, I freely under freely admit and understand why 
like Red Sox manager management would look at what he did in the AL East, like, yeah, we can't do that. I understand. Like, I, I like I, I disagree with them. I think Sonny Gray's problem here was a multitude of things that had nothing to do with him. AKA sure. the pitching coach was Larry Rothschild. Like, I think that was the that biggest was- fucking problem. But yeah, like he also had like a two eight ERA on the road while he was here, and then like a five sure. ERA at home. So you can do with that whatever you will, but. He's got a yeah. 30 AAV the next two years. Pass. 30 to- like 30 million? AAV, like, yeah. Never mind. Pass. I that's, I that's not a good idea. <laughs> never mind. That's not a good idea. No. Not, not- and he's got a $30 million <laughs> team option for his age 37 season. Like, what? What were the Cardinals doing last year? <laughs> wait. Wait, 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 wait. He has, it's, it's two for 60 and a team option or three for 90 and a team option? It's he's got 25 coming to him next year, right. 35 the year after that, and then it's a 30 million dollar team option in 2027. Okay, okay, well, no, nobody's picking up that team option, so that's no, of course not. But the fact like it's a five million dollar buyout, like, <laughs> like you still have to pay that. <laughs> that's really funny. You gotta pay him to go away. I really appreciate uh contract details like that. Like, what, what, what is the incentive to write that in for yourself? Like, I gotta pay five million dollars for you to go away. Why? What's the incentive? Oh, well, it's fine. it says here Gray may opt out if, if option is exercised. What they is he the stupidest person alive? Like, why would he opt out? <laughs> no, it's okay. I don't want the thirty. I, I'd rather not. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know, man. So yeah, oh yeah, he signed a three year seventy five million dollar deal with a thirty million dollar option attached. So he got a four year one hundred and five million dollar deal. <laughs> That's crazy. Crazy. Uh, the pitching crazy. market. The pitching market is wild, bro. But no one else got signed last year. Only like the Cardinals signed everybody like the day the World Series ended. They got him. They got Lance Lynn, and they made another deal. Like that oh, so they were they were, they were the Lakers in twenty pretty much seventeen eighteen whatever it was when they pretty were signing they everybody were. up like. They were giving contracts to people that nobody else was going to compete with in this lifetime, and they were just like, yeah, right. yeah, we'll sign Timothy Moskov. Like, yeah. There, okay, was Lakers? Okay. there was definitely another guy that they gave money to. The sec with a Kyle Gibson. I don't think it was. Maybe it was. They were just like, here, we're we're done. Like we we got all our Christmas shopping done. We'll see you guys next year. And then it went about as well as you'd expect. And they went 83 and 79, better than us. It was delightfully mid, just like the Red Sox. For sure. I can't disagree with that. Uh so yeah, we'll see. The playoffs start. Well, it was yeah, that your real world series pick, Yankees over Padres. No, I'm gonna stick with Yankees Phillies. Okay. Yankees over <laughs> Yankees over Phillies. Okay. Yeah. So you really just think it's 09. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then six. Same amount of games too. Yeah. Very Lakers of you. Yeah. Oh, don't don't come. I'm not a Laker fan. Don't do that. I'm saying that's how they operate. I know, but I just leave me alone. Leave me out of this. I'm gonna be compared to them. It's happened your whole life. That's what being a Yankee fan is. Uh, and I hate it. I prefer my friends don't do the same thing to my face. At least I prefer that. You don't do it behind my back, but you might guess, but not to my face. At least uh, I have some respect. Uh, but yeah. Best of luck to everyone in the playoffs. Not my business. <laughs> 